How is this not lying? Like, how is this not just lies? I agree with you that he should have done better research before coming onto this show. Mike Winger, you need to come up with arguments that aren't just recitations of the Sanhedrin or of atheists going after Christians. This, this is bad. I mean, so I, far, maybe he's going to have some better argument. And that's yeah, why but, I wanted to bring this, because this is ostensibly like the best of the best mm -hmm. evangelical against Mormons. Well, that's sad. So, Mike Winger, you need to repent either of your misrepresentation on your authority and knowledge or with your lying about other Christians in the body of Christ. Mike Winger, I would love a response from you to this video. You can't be in 2023 and still regurgitate these 1980s talking points about, about ancient natives. The lack of empathy is mind blowing. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, back to Midnight Strike Through Mormons. I'm your host, Cardinellis. I'm joined in the studio by Kwaku L. Brad <laughs> Whitbeck and Lucas Hansen. Wow, Kwaku, that's uh, quite a apparatus you have upon thine head, my friend. Well, I mean, yes. Um, I want to show my solidarity with Mike Winger uh, about how Mormonism is a false gospel, lying, evil Christian cult. Okay, yeah. Well, on this show... We call out um, unfair biases and lies against the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. And it's a little bit sad, the character that we are going to introduce you today, because I've been following him for a while. Uh, his name is Pastor Mike Winger. He's had some really fun, inter interesting apologetic defenses of... Um, especially old school Christianity and uh, lies told about Christians before. So I've sometimes referenced him in our, in our works. And on this show, uh, we got a problem with priestcraft and priestcraft means getting paid to be a pastor because really it does trap people in bad ideas. There's a lot of pastors that convert to our church, the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, and they're sacrificing a paycheck to do it. So I have a lot more respect for somebody that's sacrificing a paycheck to believe in the spiritual experiences and personal interactions that they've had with God than I generally do for people who have to believe the dogma of their faith for fear of losing their paycheck. There's a huge difference. Like people change religions all the time. However, um, you have to give credit to those that are sacrificing a paycheck to follow what they believe in comparison to those who are actually receiving a paycheck. Now, um, compounded upon this frustration is the fact that uh, Dr. Mike Winger has uh, now, now said some pretty... Um, he studies so much, I don't think these straw man arguments of the church that he's going to repeat here are actually, um, uh, I, I feel like he's he's purposely repeating lies because I know how well studied he is in his videos. So you're well, either- Well, Cardin, you're going to say that because you are part of this cult. Oh yeah, that's true. I would, yes. So anyway, enough, enough of me talking. Let's see. I'm, I'm going to say I think he's good faith. You think he's good yeah. faith? Okay. As, as the person who went and found this and brought the clips to debunk him, I actually do think it's good faith. Okay. So hopefully we can at least show him better arguments, if not change his mind on a couple of things. Okay. So I came in guns blazing and you're like a dove. So we got the hawk here and we got the dove right there. Mike Winger, and I would love a response from you to this video. Okay. Good, would, fa good would faith that, to good Satan. faith. <laughs> <laughs> That's what you would say. No, he, he's would responded say. to people like Aaron Raw before. And who's that? At Matt Dilla something any guy? Okay, oh, yeah, yeah. he's responded it, to them before. In the ecumenical spirit of the religion of woke being a bigger threat than any of our interfactional threats are, I will continue as a dove, like Luke Hansen suggests. But anyway, Satan I, appears as an angel of dove. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> okay, it's not quite what it says. People that don't do you know, know Mormon, <laughs> yeah. People that don't know who you are, Quaku, are going to be really confused. But it is really funny. So anyway, let's see what this guy has to say about us, Pastor Mike Winger. This is um, his analysis of the Book of Mormon. This is analysis of the Book of Mormon. Here we go. Let me tell you a little bit about um, the context of how this happened back in the day. In the 1800s, there was huge interest in Native Americans at the time. There were like what's the history of these people that we didn't really know about before? Well, that's what the Book of Mormon's about. It's about from 600 BC okay. to 385 AD. It's about a thousand year period of time. Uh, okay. Okay. I mean, the Book of Mormon is about that in part, but it's another testament of Jesus Christ. I think it's actually missing a pretty, 
just a large portion of the Book of Mormon if your takeaway is that this is justifying Native American history. Yeah, and by the way, it wasn't generalized Native American fascination that caused Joseph Smith to translate the Book of Mormon. I mean, yeah, if you open up our scriptures here, we believe the Bible to be the Word of God. We also believe the Book of Mormon to be the Word of God. If you go to the actual cover of the Book of Mormon, okay, what's the very first thing that you read? Uh, Well, technically not the very first thing. There is a table of contents. You know what I'm saying? But you read that it is a what? Another testament of Jesus Christ. It's a fascination with Jesus Christ. If Quaku's Quaku's not going to say it, I'll say it. They just did that so that it would look like it's talking about Jesus Christ. Yeah, which Jesus? Yeah. yeah. They didn't do that. There it is. They didn't do that till the 80s, till they wanted to change their tact and start getting in on the Christian. Yeah. Well, that's why Jesus is from (laughs) Jerusalem. Not the Buffalo tribe. Okay. <laughs> okay but fine. here's the thing about the Book of Mormon. I mean, you can say, oh, it's just an explanation of the Indians, which was a really big deal back then. First of all, we don't know if Joseph Smith read any of these things. like The, the, the Book of Mormon is not an explanation about. of the Indians. It's the story of God's interaction with the people that with, left Jerusalem in 600 BC. With Israelites. Yeah, we, we don't have wigwams or teepees or peace pipes. You know, okay. you, you watch the Solo movie, you yeah. watch Solo, and yeah. it's like, oh, this is how he met Chewy. This is how he got his blaster. This is how, you know, this is how he got his name. That's not the Book of Mormon. There's no, one first of all, spot. There's one mm-hmm. spot that they have like loincloths when they go to battle. And so maybe that's like the origin story of the Indian. Okay. You guys were obsessed but... with natives. You <laughs> tried to, to grift off of them by selling your sorcery and your witchcraft. And Joseph Smith was a uh, he 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 he. Let's he, go back to Pastor Steve. Steve. He was, he, <laughs> let's finish. Let's let him speak here. Let's let him speak here. Um, the the bad people, according to the Book of Mormon, they became more and more dark skinned. This Joseph Smith was a racist. And exactly. Just- whoa whoa whoa. Oh, pff. hold up there for a second. Okay. This evangelical dude is going to tell us that the first American religious leader to advocate openly for the abolition of slavery is just a racist. Yeah. He's going to reduce it to that. You know, dark- also he's incorrect. It they don't progressively get darker and darker. There's some kind of curse that we don't know if, whether it's symbolic or literal that happens earlier on in the Book of Mormon and it actually changes up a couple of times. Well, and you have you going have somebody dark- you have in 3rd Nephi somebody like Samuel the Lamanite. Mm-hmm. Going to the people of Zarahemla, telling them to repent and that Christ is going to come. Yeah. Yeah. In America, this is like a black man escaping from the South and coming to New York and telling them to repent. Yes. And the black man's the good guy. Okay. okay. That's first, not a move a racist pulls you, if they're making up a story. Okay. Well, you're, you're all bad. I found your racist verse. Okay. You liars. Look at this proof of Mormonism's racist. For none of these iniquities come of the Lord, for he doeth that which is good among all children of men, and he doeth nothing save it be plain in the children of men. And he invites them all to come unto him, and partake of his goodness, and he denieth none that come unto him, black and white, bond and free, male and female. Whoa. Oh. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> Look, I'll tell you as much right now. Dr. Mike Winger, I call you to repentance because you are lying. You are lying about one of two things. And I'm sorry, you may not like this, Lucas. Uh, I mean, Luke, but he's Mike. lying about one of two things. He's lying about one of two things. He's either lying about how much he has studied this and misrepresenting himself as an okay, authority. Gr- on granted. The, let me finish. Oh, okay. He's either lying about how he's representing himself as an authority figure on the history of Book of Mormon, or he is lying about the truth that he knows of the history of Book of Mormon and trying to twist it for an audience to get likes, follows, money, whatever. Because the truth is, Joseph Smith was the first presidential candidate assassinated in the United States of America. And one of the reasons why he was hated was for his abolitionist views. He actually had the most forward thinking, most free thinking, most free the slaves thinking attitudes of anybody in his day. And the Book of Mormon specifically calls out hatred based upon skin color. And the only reason the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints ever fell into the pit of racism was because they were trying to be like the Protestants and the evangelicals that surrounded them that demanded in order for them to receive recognition as a state and demanded in order for them to receive peace as a people from the mob, the Protestant and evangelical mob that was persecuting them and killing them, that they adopt the racist 
curse of Cain doctrine that the Mike Wingers of 1860 and 70 were propagating all over the United States of America. So Dr. Mike Winger, you need to repent. You are lying either about your authoritative research or about the history of the Book of Mormon because neither one of those are true and the Church of Jesus Christ only ever adopted racism to try and fit in with guys like you in 1860. You went from you went from zero to 100 really yeah, fast. I, yeah. I'm sorry, so, but that's the truth. He says he puts in 100 hours okay, into so some of his videos. Here's, here's, uh, just he, before he we dive read. into that much Mike, further. Mike, as far as I can tell, you've never claimed to have actually read the Book of Mormon. And that shows. So I'm actually going to push back on you, Cardin, and not say he's necessarily misrepresenting. But I do think there's a opportunity for more information. And, and what's one, the title of the video? Well, <laughs> uh, so this, uh, yeah, this this video is a two hour debunk of Mormons for like some woman youth. Woman in ministry. So he's claiming to debunk something. To debunk, he, he is has presenting to himself it. as an expert. So what I will say is, yeah, I, I uh, can see how he's he's being incredibly reductive in his arguments right here, right now. He is being incredibly reductive in a way that I think is incorrect. Uh, what I will say is there are some racist characters within the Book of Mormon. And so I can see where he could maybe misconstrue that. If he's not doing a careful reading of the Book of Mormon and trying to actually understand it, how he could be like, oh, this book is racist. If he reads only things from in within Nephi or there's a part in Alma that may sound a certain way if you're l reading it looking for this. That's like watching the Avengers and thinking the, the, the message of the movie is to destroy a planet. Yes, <laughs> yes, it is that way. It is that way. So I, I think I, I'm saying this to maybe extend the benefit of the doubt to the guy. Like if... He ended up reading those things because someone else told him, hey, look at this verse. That's probably my take on what happened is he looked at those verses and was like, hey, this is my takeaway. And Cardin, that makes you correct in a way that he needs to not present himself as an expert this way. Like, I'm going to debunk this thing that I haven't even read. You know, so I would say, Mike, be more careful and take a look at the things that you're going to be saying and double check to make sure that they're real. Check with some actual LDS people. Hi, we are here. We'll talk to you. You can talk to and, me. And Mike. by the way, yeah. especially, especially I, yeah. Luke. Don't talk to those guys. A after, you can... <laughs> after Russell M. Nelson's talk on trying to be less combative and less, you know, don't be peace at all price, you know what I'm saying, but also be less contentious. I'm trying to follow Matthew 18 lately, where if you have a problem with your brother, and we are indeed all brothers in, uh, in, in God's way, right? I actually called. I actually looked up what church he serves at and called that church and invited him on the show months ago. I've reached out to this guy on multiple platforms multiple times in order to fulfill the Matthew 18 scripture where if you have a disagreement with your brother, first go to him personally. And if you can resolve it, you have maintained a brotherhood, right? Then if you can't come with two or three witnesses and now I've got two or three witnesses, we're gonna try and call you out with two or three witnesses, all right? And then uh, if you don't go for that, I can't bring the whole church after you because I don't represent the church, according to Matthew 18. You know what I'm saying? But um, I can say you need to repent and I can disabuse your audience of the bad narratives that you have fed them. Um, so mm -hmm. anyway, let's keep going. Let's let him see what else he has to say. Part of what, what he put in his religion, but also the golden plates themselves. They were reportedly six inches by eight inches and then it was six inches thick it had to probably weigh at least 200 pounds and so <laughs> okay <laughs> so the level dude, of so thinking in uh, this dude. is very shallow okay like, i could just see joseph wait, wait, smith wait. doing let deadlifts him, let him go a little bit longer he's okay, gonna, he's okay. gonna kind of finish okay. out Let's the see. thought calculations okay. have been done on this how thin can the pages be because they want to make them real thin so that he could actually carry them so supposedly Joseph Smith traveled three miles while carrying this 200 pound book minimum. It quotes the New Testament verbatim. Okay, stop. Has, the, has that man done never that okay. done a farmer's carry? Okay, so, <laughs> so, so <laughs> besides, I mean, <laughs> maybe Wait. I'm maybe I'm just kind of nerdy and stuff, but this takes about five minutes because he says 200 pounds minimum. That's, okay, that's what you said, Mike. Okay. 200 pounds minimum, and people have done the calculations on this. Yeah, six inches times six is inches times eight inches. That's your inches squared. Go find the density of gold that is 11 ounces per inch cubed. Then you divide that by 16 ounces per pound equals 198 pounds. So even if this is a solid block of gold, yeah. 
it's That's the key. just under 200 pounds minimum because Mike Winger's you're saying that this is a minimum no 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 that's absolutely maximum and it's obviously not a solid block of gold gold like 14 karat gold is only about 55 percent gold yeah it's an um, alloy and gold is so dense that when you're an alloy it's reducing the density a lot so let's say that our alloy was electrum because the ancient americans for this racist joseph smith he conceived of ancient americans that were that knew that you can mix gold and silver together or copper that's also been proposed uh -huh. mix it together i think it was like a 40% gold okay. ratio and then you add an acid to it and that oxidizes off the other metal like copper because if it was copper it would be green you yes. get a green tint but it specifically says in Alma that the gold plates are going to retain their shininess through all this time it's retain kind of like brightness. a prophecy yeah. Yeah. yeah so you put an acid on this it oxidizes off the other metal and gold is the only thing on the outside so it retains that gold that doesn't get tarnished, okay. but it's still an alloy, which everything that's made out of gold is an alloy. You can't have a gold book that's just gold and it never said it was pure gold. Okay. It said the appearance of gold. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so we're talking, so if we make it that alloy, if we're saying it's electrum, that puts the weight at 112 pounds. And then there's obviously going to be gaps in between the pages. They're not going to be perfectly flat. Even the etchings on it are going to create yeah. imperfections. We're talking at least 20 to 30% airspace. And so, so what's a boil so, down so to Mike, here? <laughs> yeah, 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 well, we're trying to do a thorough debunk so okay. that he actually That's responds true. to this. So, Mike, you say 200 pounds minimum. I say 80 pounds to 90 pounds maximum, but probably down in that 40 to 50 yeah. pound range. So, so, so it's it's heavy. Also, that the witnesses said. One, one thing I want to say about this argument, because I've heard it before, and uh, the reason I think this is not a clear, very in-depth thinking is because he treats it as though it is a solid block first and then is surprised that a farm boy can run <laughs> far carrying a heavy object. Sorry, uh, like, I want to like, make sure. I no, my, my family is from farms and like farmers carries are very common. You'll carry uh, so 80, 70 90 pounds. pounds. It's not a huge deal. Mm -hmm. Sorry, you ever I, met a 12 year old I, farm I, boy that has a stronger grip than you do? I, <laughs> yeah, like my kid at gym, I, dude. I, my, I don't, I, I may have missed something. Because there's no way he's making the argument plates too heavy, right? He's not. He's not saying that. <laughs> no, he is. That no. There's no way. We have to go back and watch it. He there's no did. way a distinguished Christian academic is making plates too heavy. But therefore, religion faith. He's he's a biblical <laughs> scholar, though, not a chemist. Okay. Well, hold on. Also, here's my other problem. Remember when I I still have to write down my Ten Commandments of anti Mormons. Mm. because I can't remember if it's rule number three or rule number five, that they always recycle debunked lies and refuse to listen to the actual debunkings and incorporate them. Yeah. You know, they just keep recycling old lies. One of the first lies told in Mormonism Unveiled, if I remember, I think that was the first anti-Mormon book written in 1838, okay, that persisted all the way up until they found the Nag Hammadi Library was the fact that they used to say plates never even existed. Mm -hmm. It actually used to be a common... Uh, anti-Mormon claim that oh plates never existed until they started finding them on Roman soldiers carrying the writings of Epictetus until oh dare I say in the Dead Sea Scrolls they found a copper scroll written by the Essenes which is probably the Orthodox Jewish sect that Lehi the first prophet of the modern Book of Mormon believed and and looking at this understanding that metallic objects were used for precious and I say extremely precious religious writings you can't come at the Book of Mormon yeah. and say like, oh, it's not true without having accidentally recycled, not science, yeah. but having recycled old 200 year old tropes against yeah. anti-Mormonism. Well, and, and just to kind of put this to bed a little bit, he's doing a thing that I very much dislike. He is presenting it as though he lied because they said they were pure gold when that was never said. Yeah. Like like Luke pointed out, they said they had the appearance of gold. And so there or are you just say gold plates. Yeah, like exactly. I say, oh, what kind of ring do you have? I have a gold ring. Oh, it's only 55 percent gold. So it no, like it looks like it's gold. So we call it gold. Yeah. The That's nomenclature dictates that it's a gold ring. Is yeah. this that guy simple. 300 years later going to say that because I said I have an Apple phone? They go, that doesn't look like an apple to me. <laughs> that <laughs> looks like a piece of mass and glitter. <laughs> I am shocked by this. Also, okay. we're talking about a time period which you had to go chop down trees to get your own lumber to build your 
everybody was way stronger back then. Yes. Yeah. Like I, I am. Sh- I get wow. our society is super weak, but whenever I hear this argument, I think that person I thought it was to actually this is going to be hard. Like I was like, oh, we got to get into some real. Di- yeah. This is silly. And <laughs> Joseph Smith was known for being strong. Yes. So yes. just he's in the wrestling hall of fame, Doctor Mike the Winger, the stick pull champion of Palmyra. <laughs> well, no, but he's still in the wrestling hall of fame, is he not? Is he really? Yeah, no, oh, I didn't he's know that. actually athletic wrestling, not like WWE. I, I think he's still in the Wrestling Hall of Fame, if I'm not mistaken, right? As oh. a character. Yeah, just like the Kirkland Temple is still like one of the top 10 most beautiful North American architectural buildings of the 19th century. You know, there's all these like legitimate secular awards he's been given. One of them was for his strength. So, I, I mean, okay, whatever, dude. Let's keep going. Let's let him keep digging his own grave. I have lost we might have mountains. To like three seconds. Okay, I have lost mountains of respect for this guy. Here we go. It's the New Testament verbatim, even though it was supposedly written independent of the New Testament. Uh, Joseph Smith said there was no Latin or Greek or anything like that on the Book of Mormon tablets, yet in the Book of Mormon it uses phrases like Alpha and Omega. All right, let's pause. There's only one. Okay. Okay. This man has clearly never translated a book. Does he speak any different languages? He's probably going to brag about his Greek because he took like two courses of Greek, enough to learn the Protestant version of what the Greek is supposedly yeah, supposed yeah, yeah. to say in his divinity school, which is really just oh, a mockery did he say that of the Book of Mormon Greek. doesn't take place during the New Testament. Did he say no, that? No, 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 he said so, it quotes the New Testament. Yeah, we verbatim. kind of, he said it quotes entire passages ver- verbatim. But it's like, are, are you talking about when Christ comes to the Americas and gives the Sermon on the Mount to the Nephites, which makes complete sense if Christ went to another place? Because that's kind of like. The sermon. Uh-huh. Christ quotes himself verbatim multiple of- times in the New Testament. Why? Because if a scripture is good and ain't broken, yeah. don't fix it. And, outside and, and, of and that- outside of Third Nephi, there aren't these huge chunks of the New Testament quoted verbatim, unless he's trying to say, well, the ideas are quoted verbatim mm-hmm. because it goes with the Bible. It's teaching that this gospel. Is, this is yeah, this is a point for yeah. the Book of Mormon, yeah. not against. How it. many and- times did Jesus Christ say, "Your faith hath made thee whole"? Are we going to say that Jesus Christ was a false prophet because he requoted himself? <laughs> like, it's and, and that's the thing that they don't seem to understand is like, look, this is another testament of Jesus Christ. Of course, Jesus Christ is going to give the same teachings, you know, so I, I'm not bothered at all. I don't think he, the way he talked about this, tried to set it up as though it was a super strict translation of whatever language was on the plates. Right. And he tries to present it as though like. Well, he wouldn't have had this. I'm sure he would be bothered by the word adieu being in it and be like, oh, there's no French in it, you know. But Mm -hmm. this is Joseph Smith as a translator putting the best possible words to what was written and the intents of those words. It's not going to be some word for word type translation like Mike seems to be expecting. And it seems that he's angry that it wasn't done by a council of self-awarded scholarship scholars. Okay that agreed on the translation according to what they think it says so that they could all argue about it later and say that another new translation gets need to be that needs to get made so that they can argue about that one. So Quake, you got anything before we move on? We have enough material here to address what he says that I don't think we need to start okay. making up what. Okay, Mike let's keep going. Let's keep going. It's bad enough. This guy was going to be actually like a for a good like I thought he was going to give a formidable mm-hmm. argument. This is bad. I mean, so I, far, maybe he's going to have some better argument. And that's yeah. why but, I wanted to bring this because this is ostensibly like the best of the best mm-hmm. evangelical against Mormons. Well, that's sad. Okay. We we do yeah. have a theologian coming up. Okay. He cool. actually, I think, does do better. Okay. okay then right. let's see. Let's see what uh, Mike Winger's got to say now. One place the Mormon church has publicly declared, this is where this happened. And that's a hill in New York called the Hill Camorra. Wrong. Uh, that's, I swear, he can't go one sentence without this. Well, I cut out the sentences that we would respond to. Uh, well, I know, but like he's got like five sentences in a row where he can't get to the comment without recycling straw man arguments. We don't claim that the Hill Camorra is the exact spot where it happened. There's so the, many the enthusiastic first time, people. The first time that Joseph Smith in Revelation or ever referred to the Hill Camorra was in DNC 121 from Liberty Jail. We're talking like the early 1840s. So years and years later, glad tidings from Camorra is is the quote when he's talking about receiving the gospel. And, and yes, there's a lot and, of people. And that's because other people had already started calling it that. And, and let's just think about it logically. Camorra is where the last battle between the Nephites and the Lamanites took place. Mormon escapes from there with his life barely. And now he's going to come back to 
I mean, apparently the, the Lamanites have probably claimed this territory now mm -hmm. and they're hunting down Nephites. He's really going to go and dig a whole thing and make some concrete and make a whole stone box to put <laughs> with the North American arc. Yeah. With please. his 200 pound plates that he's <laughs> yes. been dragging. Yeah. About, like, <laughs> so just logically, that doesn't make sense for and Mormon to have put it in the. Now, of course, the Heartlanders are going to come after us about this. Yes. So now well, we're fighting on multiple fronts. But I still think that the two Kamora theory makes a lot of well, sense. Scripturally, the in the Book of Mormon, it literally says the gold plates were not put in with the other records at the Hill Cumorah. Mm. It says that Moron or that Mormon put all of his records into the Hill Cumorah. Wasn't it the Hill then, Rama? Or is that the same it, thing? It, yeah, it says the same okay. thing. Uh, but he then gives this record, the gold plates, to his son Moroni. So yeah. it's like, oh, wait a second. There's a hill of records that is not that hill. That and, and and what you're saying about Joseph Smith eventually calling it the Hill Cumorah, that's after other people started calling it that. Yeah, it, it's, look, uh, urban legends pop up, okay? I'm not the one that invented La Llorona, okay? But there's Mexicans that believe in La Llorona. You know what I'm saying? So it, it's like sometimes, yes, people in their enthusiasm will make up myths, but being able to delineate between what was established by the prophet of the restoration and what is an urban legend to me is basic scholarship, like just basic scholarship. And if you're going to represent yourself again as an authority, authoritative enough to perform a debunking, then you should be able to present even moderate steel man arguments. But instead, I've only heard about five or six recitations of old anti-Mormon tropes yes. developed by evangelical pastors in the 1860s and 70s. Yeah. So Mike Winger, you need to repent either of your misrepresentation on your authority and knowledge or with your lying about other Christians in the body of Christ. So let, we'll let him keep talking if we want to call it talking. Owned property owned by the Mormon church where supposedly the Nephites and Lamanites had their final battle and 230,000 people were killed at that location. They used steel. They had all these things, horses and stuff like that, that never existed in the new world at that time. Horses aren't mentioned in that portion, by the way. Ugh. Also, I wonder how he feels about the horses getting discovered in Mesoamerica in Book of Mormon times. Yeah. Oh, and, and the Native American legends about how they did have horses. Huh. Would, would that maybe... Who would be racist for ignoring those <laughs> yeah. native stories? Oh, but no, not the dark people. The dark people couldn't make steel. Like, because blast furnaces weren't made until, like, you know, the 1800s. And there's no way that the people with darker skin than us English people, because the Royal Navy rules the sea, there's no way the Polynesians crossed uh, 3,000 miles to get from Tahiti all the way to the freaking Easter Island. No way. No, no, not us. They sound literally like all the racist people in that uh, movie, The Lost City of Z. Mike, I don't think you're a racist. You know what I'm saying? Well, no, I'm just saying. You're just accidentally making kind of racist arguments. The, yeah. It's the soft bigotry of low expectations. I have held in my hand in Jerusalem steel artifacts for sale on the antiquities market that predate Christ by 700 years, predate Nephi by 100 years. And if these things were preserved as religious artifacts, it's wholesale, 100% wholly possible that these people carried steel into the ancient Americas. I, I don't I don't think Mike Winger is racist, but I will point out on that point that you're, you're taking... So when it's convenient for you, you call Joseph Smith racist. And look, mm -hmm. they had black skin, all this stuff. But then when it's convenient for you, you talk about, oh, they're supposed to be super advanced, but we haven't found any of that. So it's like, you need to pick a lane. Do we have really advanced black people that have basically what Jerusalem would be able to do in terms of warfare at the same time? Or do we have primitive people that Joseph Smith was very racist towards and wrote about? Like you got to pick a lane does, does and this, stick with it. Does this guy think that um, it wasn't until like 1900 that a bunch of uh, like white people saw that they had pyramids in Egypt and then went to South America and built them? Yeah. Or does he think that the ancients <laughs> seem to understand curious workmanship and architecture because well, they've got the... In this, this, in this one, he's specifically saying on Hill Cumorah, we yeah. should find steel, okay, bones, Antiquities and of New horses. York. Antiquities of New York. Fact. Mountain we have found yeah. battlefields underground in New York City from ancient America in which thousands of Native Americans were dead and buried. That is a fact of American history. Here's what's so wild about this to me. We are right now in the era of Joe Rogan and Graham Hancock. We are <laughs> yep. literally in the era in which Netflix is publishing archaeologists who are saying, hey, 
We were wrong about all of history. It seems that we've had in the eight. We're in the age of understanding Gobekli Tepe. We're in the age of under and finding uh, 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 the the elongated skulls of Peru. We ha- we're in the age of lidar. We're in the age of oh, we were ignorant about the past. They had they were more technologically advanced than we recognize, mm-hmm. and we can't just take. The colonial view of the guys they were fighting, <laughs> view of their history, yeah. And this guy, it, I, you can't be in 2023 and still regurgitate these 1980s talking points about about ancient natives. Yep. Like this guy, this, they're not current anymore. And that's how I know he is not doing research himself and coming to these conclusions. Mm-hmm. He is regurgitating God makers and 1980s and 1970s pamphlets still, yeah. which was the regurgitation. Of the 1870s yeah. anti-Mormonism. And I want to wow. piggyback off what you said, Kwaku, because, I mean, this we are in a new age where people aren't just open to new possibilities. New possibilities are being discovered. But one of the things that Graham, Hawk show, Graham Hancock was showing how, look, they're so threatened by what these conclusions I've derived from science create in a change of their narrative, they won't even let me stand on Serpent Mound. Mm-hmm. They, they, they. I'm not a threat. They, they meaning the uh, the pa- current archaeological tradition. The Kirk, Car- yeah, and so, Carden. Literally, the, the, all this does is show how his divinity school is so threatened by what understanding the beauty and grandeur of the Native Americans would do instead of their. Savage and unrefined incapabilities. Cardinal, you know, are you he's defending a power structure. He's not defending a doctrine. Are you suggesting that the sa- that academics who refuse to open the door or look into the discovery of the actually advanced world of the ancients seem to also have the same ego? As the religionists who inherited their theology and beliefs from those same academics of old that as well would not look into any possibilities. It's almost like these academics and these like Protestant gatekeepers seem to continue to align on an old world model that we are acknowledging is defunct. Yeah, that's mm-hmm. what, one of the number one themes of goodwill hunting. Yeah, You know what I'm saying? Okay, let's keep I wonder, going. I wonder oh. if this guy's opinion will change when he's like, oh, there were horses. You know, like, will that change his opinion at all, or is he? Uh, just... No, because the witnesses are completely untrustworthy. Okay, yeah, next, let's let him our, keep going. Okay. Yeah, which is our next let's one. Last point: we fact, fact, not a Mormon fact, a fact. They had highways in Guatemala. Were they were, with the pulleys? Were they using squirrels to pull these things of yeah, brick? Yeah. <laughs> what do you mean they didn't have horses? What are you talking about? Peacocks? Were peacocks helping them move no, these Kweku, structures? Kweku, tapirs, wild these turkeys. <laughs> Wild turkeys. Oh my. It's in their oh art. Gosh. We can go find their art. They have. I am. I am shocked. Who is the guy we we we, we, were, we were researching for? This is the show. Uh, 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 Bernal's uh, Castillo. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. Even admits. Yeah. Uh. They're they they're really effective at domesticating these deer, but these deers are like really large deer. They're not like European deer. Like they're jacked big deer that they're riding on into war. Okay, so if I can recognize that a seahorse is not an actual horse, I can recognize well, that using names of similar animals that are using the exact same functions as animals I'm familiar with in my land, historically, we will use the exact same name for... I, I am shocked that this level of... I'm not going to say stupidity because I'm going to follow Nelson, but this level of... of, of Analysis? nana nana boo boo is being <laughs> hoisted into this video. Okay. That's okay. About, and... While we're on this tangent for this long, horses are never in battle. You never have a cavalry unit in the Book of Mormon. Nope. Which does lean some credence to the fact that maybe these were big deer that were domesticated. So you could use it to run down to the grocery store, but not necessarily to engage in a day-long battle in. Yeah, also that's consistent with what the conquistadors documented. Some of the earliest conquistadors when they came to the United States of America talked about the interesting cattle that they had. And a lot of people say, oh, well, they were just making these. Well, cattle you back then was used to reference any domestic animal that was basically used for agricultural reasons. So it's most likely that the, mm-hmm. the, the horses Wait. referenced in the Book of Mormon were some sort of domesticated animal. Are you telling me that the meaning of certain words changes over time? Yeah. And that yeah. we shouldn't have rigid expectations. Like man and woman. Oh, gosh. No, yeah. 
<laughs> well, moving on from that. that argument. <laughs> Let's let him keep that. That's like getting okay. mad that I called it a meerkat. And you go, that's not a cat. That's yeah. actually more of a, a rodent. Uh, uh, like, bro, <laughs> shut up. Okay, Jeez. so here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Let's let him continue. Time. And any digs that have begun on the Hill Camorra to find archaeological evidence have been stopped by the Mormon church. Let's talk about those witnesses because the truth of Mormonism okay, yeah. hangs upon these witnesses. Now, this is okay. kind of like going. in Christianity. We look at the resurrection and we say the apostles were eyewitnesses. And we really have hang our case upon the fact that they were saying the truth. With the apostles, we think it was true because what? They were willing to suffer and die for these beliefs. They never recanted. And they seem to be, all have been willing to suffer and die for Pause. those beliefs. Has anyone yeah. told them about who, the martyrdom? Who, who else did that? Yeah. Was it Joseph and Hiram, his and brother? Hiram. Dude, Did this they, actually really pisses me off because it was Protestant mobs that hunted down all of the early saints, some of which I'm related to. It's the Pastor Mark Wingers of the 1840s, 50s, and 60s that led the anti-Mormon mobs that killed women, children, and men, innocent at point blank. So if you want to say, Pastor Mark Winger, that there wasn't enough sacrifice, no one in your congregation or within 200 years of the formation of your church has suffered for their sincerely held religious beliefs as any member of historic Mormonism. I'm not going to try and defend what people did back then, or, but or I will say, Mike, that's not you. <laughs> <laughs> that's not you it's Mike. not he's but but also and this culturally was a little more like vigilante justice was a little more common in the united states yeah so it's not like it was specifically the members of the church yeah. but let's just hear what he says yeah. about the so witnesses witness wise witness wise he has just the logic that he used to go with the 12 apostles also applies to joseph smith and hiram smith yeah Okay. No, and he's Just, making a good he's making a good point because he's reciting it, the things his divinity school told him to say. But that the church that's paying him to preach what they want him to preach has ha, has approved in their zeitgeist. These guys can never think for themselves because their paychecks depend upon it. And you know what, Mike Winger, you're invited to come on our show. But a prerequisite to that is you tell me one thing that you're allowed to deviate from in your own thought process that you have. That wouldn't get you kicked out. Once another thing that's interesting is um, you notice that we never in our church, I've never heard an apostle say we believe in the Book of Mormon because of the testimony of the eyewitnesses. They consistently say read it and get a confirmation of the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. But what he seems to be saying here, I mean, I haven't l listened to a bunch of his sermons. But I find the argument of we believe the Bible is true because of the witness of the apostles. What about uh, the the all the the pagan wizards that saw had a witness of their magic being accurate, and what? they died for it when when the conversion happened. And it's happened, a very like, post enlightenment kind yes, of like yeah. scientific process, all this stuff. But actually, I. I think maybe sometimes in the LDS church we underuse the witnesses a little bit. Because yeah. the fact of the matter is that it was prophesied in the Book of Mormon that we'd have it. Yep. We do have the law of the two or three witnesses. Yep. And the Lord, you know, the Lord told Joseph Smith, no, don't give him the 116 pages. But he was completely fine with having these witnesses to establish it. Mm -hmm. but I did, so I, yeah. I actually like... In fact, what, it was commanded. I actually like what Mike Winger is setting up here. Because he is saying there is an evidentiary level level that Christianity has reached that I'm going to try to say Mormonism hasn't reached. But, and but, I think using that yeah. comparison is valid. It's just that what's going to come next, what he tries to pull out as his evidence is going to fall well, apart completely. Luke, Luke, not Lucas. Let me push back on that because... Thank you. Um, Thank you. <laughs> do we then have to accept the amount of people in world history who have witnessed miracles in their respective religions and who died as martyrs for those miracles in their religions, by his logic, those things that will have to be true as well, we have to accept those as truth. I, but I didn't say only witnesses. No, so I didn't. No. I'm do, like, I think the Hanson Five model is, is awesome. We have but he doesn't witnesses. believe in that. But the thing is, he does. He just doesn't want to apply it to us. Yeah. At okay. One oh, point, yeah, fair. I, see I didn't pull this clip, but at one point in the video, this lady who he's talking to in this clip is going to be saying, oh, my cousin. She keeps talking about her cousins, like her Mormon cousins, like fretting over them. What am mm. I going to tell him to get? And so she's saying, what am I going to tell him? Nobody's convinced by these compelling arguments you've given. Not that compelling. But <laughs> yeah. assuming they are compelling, nobody's yeah, convinced yeah, by yeah. them. And Mike says, like, don't worry. We can say what we're going to say. But at the end of the day, it's the enticings of the Holy Spirit that are going to bring them in. It's like, yes, exactly. Yes. Okay. Supported by the, the witnesses. Okay, Luke Hanson, Mike Winger stan. 
uh, <laughs> telling us to go. You don't do that when you're making up a lie. So Martin Harris, it turns out, after he'd been written as a witness of the Golden Place, he left the Mormon Church and claimed that he had just as much proof for the Shakers as he did for the Book of Mormon, which is not a compliment. Stop. Let's talk about another. Stop. Stop. Okay. You forgot one part, Mike. Martin Harris came back to the church mm -hmm. and had at least three opportunities to deny the Book of Mormon mm -hmm. and never did. Nope. If it's confirmed that he denied it and said that it was false, then it makes absolutely no sense for him to come back to the church. And and way for him to pick like one of the 12 witnesses, like one of the eight and the three, like, mm -hmm. and then not talk about any of the others. As Ooh, though yeah. as though that discredits everything, right? And and like you're saying, he came back, dude. Also, but Hawk, he this guy is really paraphrasing. Like he's Yes. He, he wouldn't hard. come up a screenshot of a quote, like nothing like that's on the screen yep. in 2023 where it takes two no, seconds. Like granted, we've seen Cardin in real time go to websites, boom, boom, boom. But here's what Granted, this is a live stream of like a conversation between him and another person. Ah, so it's okay, not like okay. I can present this and edit it and all that kind of uh -huh. stuff. I know, but so. anybody that does any search into any of the witnesses but realizes you, you, yeah. these people, Sidney Rigdon was dragged out of his log cabin, beaten until he had traumatic brain injuries and, and, and couldn't complete sentences correctly for the rest of his life. He tried you know, to kill. He wanted to kill Joseph Smith right after that. I just listened to this in Rough Stone Rolling on the flight over here. He wanted to kill himself. He, yeah. he was, no, he, he bonked he his head on everything the... and then asked his wife for a razor to go kill Joseph. And when she said no, he went and asked Joseph for a razor to go kill his wife. Yeah, it's... He, <laughs> the, he banged his head from the mob, dragging him on the ground, and it really messed him up. Yeah. yeah it was, so then they'll pull clips. Like, and by oh, the way, Oliver what Couchy mob? No, this. but what mob? But we're not the Protestant put that on evangelical mob led by the Mike but Wingers that, no. of 1860 <laughs> oh, and 1870. Man. That's a little harsh, Gardner. Yeah. I don't know. Well, no, like he wants to come at us. It's like, bro, you're saying all the same talking points that everybody that justified violence against us said, and, and you refute. Like you are showing no evolution. How do you know it wasn't a bunch of Baha'is? <laughs> Could have been a couple of Hindus. You have no clue. <laughs> Look, I mean, but that's I'm what sorry. we're trying to help with because I think Mike actually will watch something like this. Hopefully, He'll possibly Please. respond. He's a coward. <laughs> no, he didn't he's... respond. I and reached the more out we to call this him guy. That, the better it'll go, right? Yes. I reached <laughs> out go. to this guy. My bad. I'm sorry, but what am I supposed to do? I reached out to the guy and said, "Hey, dude, I love your stuff." Yeah, he probably gets he reached out seems... to a lot. He may have just missed it, right? Maybe he could have had a bad week with his email. This video sure. has two hundred thousand views. Sure, like, yeah. Okay, that's cool. You know what? That's fine. And you know, I'm getting a little hot under the collar. You're right. Okay, okay Luke. Also, Luke? I, just, I want to correct one thing. We okay. it was Protestant mobs. I don't think we should call them evangelical mobs because that 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 phrase was tomato really tomato. Though. They all no, hate I, Mormons and quote the Bible while doing it. Well, yeah, but they didn't really exist. Carden, yet. You, you got to make sure you're not being as reductive as he is, right? <laughs> I hate it when you point out hypocrisy. <laughs> I enjoy my double standards. You could okay? call them you could call them evangelists, but evangelical. That colloquium, I'm pretty sure it comes with like uh, like In Jerry Falwell era. Yeah, yeah. yeah so. Okay, fine. Okay, so we have Martin Harris. Didn't mention he came back to the church, which is kind of problematic. Okay, cool. So here we go. In terms of evidence. All right, here we go. Genius in chief, priestcraft. Maximus, uh, <laughs> oh freaking Mike Winger. Another witness, Oliver Cowdery. He's another one of the actual guys who says he saw the golden plates. It seems he later denied that he saw the plates. In Times and Seasons, Volume 2, page about? 482, huh? which is a Mormon publication, okay. it says the following. <gasps> um, and it's a complaint. like, Or prove that Christ is not the Lord because Peter cursed and swore, or the Book of Mormon, not his word, because denied by Oliver. Do I smell Oliver, a rather you renounce the Mormon Church? That was said the he was soft. Flimsiest. Do I smell a rather vague second-hand source yeah. when we have Oliver Cowdery after coming back to the church who said, "I wrote with my own pen the entire Book of Mormon, save a few pages as it fell from the lips of the prophet Joseph, as he translated it by the gift and power of God with the means of the Urim Thummim, or as it is called by the book Holy Interpreters. I was I beheld with my eyes and handled with my hands the gold plates from which it was tra transcribed." After. This apparent secondhand quote that Mike Winger is talking about, you know, and how do we know this wasn't hypothetical? Yeah, like hypothetically, if like Peter dis denied the Christ, and hypothetically, even if Oliver denied the Book of Mormon, mm -hmm. and even if it was direct, it's a secondhand quote, anyways, which Oliver which is refuted refuted by Oliver later after in his he life. comes back yeah. to the church, which wouldn't make sense if the Book of Mormon was made okay, up. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Like I want to give grace 
because I recognize like when I listen to Sadie Robertson uh, and some of these other like big Christian influencers, yeah. I feel the Holy Spirit so strongly when they speak and I have nothing but incredible love for what they do. Yeah. How is this not lying? Like, how is this not just lies? Mm -hmm. Like, you can openly disagree with a religion and have a conversation about it. I've, I debated Jeremy Howard. Mm -hmm. Okay, he is a pastor of a church. Jeremy Howard wasn't even talking like this. Like, I'm sorry, that that is a blatant misrepresentation. Yes. Because if you are, if, if he's going and finding quotes about Oliver Cowdery, Denial of the Book of Mormon, I've been on the same web page as he has. Yes. You're going to get these quotes that you have, Luke. Mm -hmm. This is not uh, well, this. I'm sorry. This is not honest. And 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 I'll tell you this. Do you know what this actually smacks of? Okay. Mm. In my earlier days in radio, I did a lot of writing and ghostwriting for other radio hosts back when um, having uh, daily news blogs from radio stations became a big thing. And I won't name them because I don't want these hosts to get chased down and canceled. Okay. But for a brief period of time, one of my assignments was to actually monitor, you know, up and coming conversations on 4chan and chat rooms and things like that for the supposed fear they had of the white supremacist movement. Right. Mike Winger sounds exactly like Daily Stormer podcasters. They go mm -hmm. into the 1870s, 1890s, 1920s, 1930s, and they dig up old racist German and racist British and racist North American and Canadian uh, scientists mm -hmm. who found evolutionary principles that prove that black people were inferior. And then they go in and they say like, oh, we'll see this doctor and his studies, uh, you know, proved that, uh, you know, uh, those people over there were inferior genetically and and now it, it was hidden it was hidden you know what i'm saying and and they they purposely propagate unscientific unsociologically sound and unhistorical narratives that are really just taken out of context half sentences from racist books that are over 150 years old and try and recycle them into mm -hmm. the zeitgeist as some kind of hidden and, knowledge and to be fair at least Mike is pulling from something that is an LDS source, right? But he's not doing the extra legwork to see and double check if it checks out. Which is lying Oliver about Cowdery his authority. Did come back. Yeah, look, this Martin is the one Harris. that gets me. You cannot research Oliver Cowdery. Yes. And these quotes without rec like without finding that he came back. Yeah, that that and that. Maybe he says it later on in the podcast. No. I don't know. Okay. okay. By, and by the way, there's no. tons of crap in the Mormon church that is impeachable. Half of our podcast is having a moan about how poorly run certain aspects and how unchrist like certain aspects of our church are. But something that is above reproach is the sacrifice of those first hundred members. Yeah. Like, you know, like th that, that it's just, uh, just unimpeachable. The sacrifice of, the, the forgiveness, the Christ-like redemption practiced by these people. This is so, a, so when I put, uh, I put, we'll have to do a podcast about this later. And actually, it's good that you're here because I'd love Luke to chime in on this. I put it in the Discord. I was uh, looking at TikToks of Jehovah's Witnesses on the street. Mm -hmm. And a lot of pa Christian pastors were coming up and like, I'm going to debunk this Jehovah's Witness and like witness to them for the likes. And I saw this 20-year-old dude really go up to these like 50-year-old women who were on the street like, they look like they just got done baking bread, like that kind of like old school, and just being so rude to them. Yeah, and I was and and like just tarnishing, like like oh Charles Taze Russell was a false prophet and all these things. And I, again, I'm not Jehovah's Witness, but I think about how they were one of the few groups that told German man with the mustache, no, we're not going to enlist in your youth, and we're not going to go along with anything. Yeah, and they were routinely savagely murdered by yeah. the German army. Mm -hmm. Has that guy, religion, ever been in that place? Has that the th earliest th Christians were? Yeah. And so it's like so, there there is a level of respect you need to have for other faiths when you realize they have sacrificed more than your own tradition has. Yeah. Like, okay, it's cool when you're part of the First Baptist Church of Bentonville, Arkansas, but but guess what? Like, your your people didn't. You didn't have a bunch of kids that that were hiding in Hans Mill as a mob shot them to pieces. Mm -hmm. You didn't have women that were being gang raped, left barren, and then had to go lead a church with trauma that you'll never recognize, like Eliza R. Snow. That is, a, you didn't have the we're gonna stand up to the NAZ eyes and die for it. No, we're gonna die for it and walk willingly into the ovens. 
Like I, I am, I'm perplexed by the mainstream Christian able to ability to just disregard the martyrdom that the smaller Christian offshoot, whatever you want to call them, religions have had to endure. I, I'm shocked by it. Like the the lack of empathy is mind blowing. Well, it, it is, and I would piggyback on that to say that the Book of Mormon describes exactly why only. A gratuitous amount of wealth and prosperity prolonged over a long period of time could create a society that has enough excess money that they can pay middle-aged men like this who obviously could never dig a ditch, could not survive as a lineman working for the Department okay. of Water and Power, <laughs> and could not lift he a two-by-four. could probably by four. learn to do those things, uh, uh, man. <laughs> okay, yeah. I, I'm sorry. I'm not even a gym bro, but I don't think this guy could clean a 50-pound barbell. Oh, All right? Man. And Pardon. only a society that wealthy can find a way to keep somebody this weak alive reciting oh gosh, such weak, weak intellectual Mike, tropes. I'm so sorry. Okay? You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm sorry. This is priestcraft. This is the the. I thought if we did this earlier in the day, we'd be more uh, like. <laughs> <laughs> turns out no, no. This Cardin is the is cash buy. And this is only the first video. You have like five no, more. Of these. We have ten total. This is why I said we probably oh, need man. two parts. Okay, let's keep it going. Okay, let's keep the going. other ones. And we can try though. to be more concise. And okay, here we go. His body. Left. We've got it out of our system. Mormonism. Okay, so here we go. Not his word, because denied by Oliver. Oliver Cowdery renounced the Mormon Church and said he was sorry and ashamed of his connection with Mormonism. And then the eight, as far as the eight, these eight people, all eight of them left the church later on when they turned wait, on wait, Jesus. Wait, 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 what? Wait, he skipped someone. He skipped David Whitmer. Yes, he did. What, why did he skip David? Because he couldn't because find any statement. Uh, yeah. yeah. But the crazy thing is David Whitmer is the one, he's the, okay, we have three witnesses. He talked about two of them that left the church for a time and he grabbed secondhand statements from them about, leaving the church he didn't mention david whitmore maybe because he couldn't find any quotes and the crazy thing is you would think that leaving the church and staying away from it would be a good case against it but david whitmore went out of his way publishing like op-eds when he heard rumors about him denying the book of mormon saying no i am away from the church but i am sticking to the book of mormon and it's not like this cult because mike winger kind of uses like they pressure their members to do stuff mm. they're over on salt lake they have no pr they have no power over David Whitmore. He has no motivation to do this. He's very respected, and he still sticks to his testimony of you the know Book what, of Mormon. The, my respect for the Hello Saints guy is just growing astronomically, <laughs> as it should. Like, He's like a good dude. it's just growing astronomically. But the thing is, well, there's Pastor Jeff changed. He used to kind of do this shtick. So I think if we lifting. if we try and reach out <laughs> to like Mike Winger and all that kind of stuff, yeah, there's a chance. Okay, I will say though, in a way that's gonna. Be there, conducive to response and dialogue. It is kind of funny. At least get rid of some of these uh, yes. bad arguments. I'm kind of watching yeah. like this. Almost has a sketch quality because Cardin is immediately going attack mode. And you guys are like, no, it is almost funny. I <laughs> grew up. Is presenting I in a very up, humorous that's way. That's shadow. why you got rid of the two. You don't. You're like, we don't need, need this. Yeah. We already have. You enough. don't know. Maybe Quake who knows what it's like because he grew up in Texas in the South, and that's its own breed of 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 evangelical. Right. But I grew up in the shadow of John MacArthur and the hatred that he would just spew getting all of these freaking, you know, I won't name the university because I actually like them and there's employees there that are actually divine and amazing, but having uh, certain members of the Baptist church on the corner literally coming to interrupt LDS services in order to witness to us and, and bring us to Christ. And what what's going on? I'm just timing how long it takes you to say you don't know how jaded I am. Or boomer. Oh, <laughs> just like, no, this ain't a boomer thing. This is a, no, like you have no idea. Oh, God. Coming up to me so what's in the next lunch, clip? I couldn't go to my lunch without these evangelicals coming up and Bible bashing mm -hmm. with me. I'm trying to eat a lunch at Heart High, and I got these cats telling me why I'm condemned. So Cardin, you're, seeing, Cardin, you're, seeing them, uh, you're seeing them in Mike Winger. Yes, I'm carrying baggage. You're kind of acting like Pardon. Clint Eastwood in Gran Torino every time. <laughs> you know what I mean? You're like, like you know, I get it. Yeah, I get it. But, you know, Except hey, I'm not Cardin. racist and they're the racist. That's true. Did yeah. you know that therapists are cheaper than making a whole YouTube channel? To <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that was savage. That was good. epic. That was Did a good I make one. it in the intro? In fact, yeah, I was going to say. That is totally going to be in the intro right there, dude, because I'm writing Savage <laughs> Luke right here, man. That was like straight up 
Last of the Mohican Savage, man. You <laughs> yeah. cut my heart out and you pulled it up and showed your buddies. So anyway, um, okay. okay, let's keep so, going. Clip two out of ten. Yeah, Skip and Martin Harris. Okay. Or David Whitmer. Skip sorry. David Whitmer, yeah. Well, we got Joseph Smith right oh, here. Oh, um, when question, now he's talking about the okay, eight Okay, I'll just add a little fact in here about David Whitmore. 50 years later, 50 years after the fact, he went and published his own proclamation and, quote, he that hath ear to hear, let him hear. It was no delusion. When there wow. were rumors going around that he was denying. Okay. Well, you know what? Here, let's burn through these next ones a little bit faster. Yeah. We're going to let him speak. We're going to have one minute here. One minute. If you absolutely have to have me pause, let me pause. But we'll, let's try and burn through this one. He is now going to attack Joseph Smith, a man that has suffered more for his views and relationship with Christ in five minutes than he has in his entire life. But we'll, we'll hit it. But Joseph Smith had a had a bad reputation. He was he was his reputation is one of a guy who was kind of like a scam artist. You Among know, who? he would do fortune telling and things like this. Joseph Smith is recorded pause, that he made a bad reputation. Fast. He was he okay. Sorry, okay, yeah. just just really really quickly. Literally, the only trial in which Joseph Smith was involved around this subject had the person who was supposedly the person he wronged saying Josiah stole right. Yeah, testify on the stand that Joseph Smith was a seer. And this was an old trope that he literally wrote down in his journal, debunked it in his lifetime, Yeah, because it was one of the first things that all of the Protestant pastor, Mark Wingers of 1820, said against him in his hometown that he grew up in. And it wasn't fortune-telling numbskull. It was treasure digging, and okay? Get your pejorative slanders correct, okay? And, and... This he presented it again. I'm sorry. I am really. This is like my. Uh, I dated this girl, and her dad would sit me down and say all this crap. And oh my gosh! So so okay. repeat the therapist. So he, here, here's the thing. I don't need a therapist. I have a YouTube channel. Uh, so Mike is presenting this as though it, or Pastor Winger is presenting this as though this was like the universal zeitgeist around Joseph Smith when it was not. There were people who thought Joseph Smith was a very good person. So, like, stop making it seem as though, like, but well, what, what is like the hundreds of thousands of converts when we, that when came we over and, and joined his church. When we go and talk about the theologian, we'll get into that aspect a more, more. more so. Yeah, but also, what's the, the, the suggestion? Jesus had a bad reputation. Yep. Je Jesus Christ had a terrible reputation. Yeah. Man. They you, murdered him. So... So th should we discount Jesus Christ now? Yeah. This is proof that modern that mainstream is. Christianity in North America isn't Christianity. It's just suburbanism. Because his main argument against Joseph Smith is the same argument that all of the Sadducees and the Pharisees and the mainstream religionists of Jesus Christ's time made against Jesus Christ. Oh, well, his reputation was so controversial. You can't take what he said seriously. He was known as a charlatan. Dare I say, a con man. His mother lied. His yeah. mother had an affair and, and blamed it on the Holy Spirit. Really? I mean, come on. Yep. Mike Winger. Oh, we're talking about Mike Mary. Winger. Yeah. Mary. yeah. Okay. Come, come at the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, me, Joseph Smith, whoever. Come at me with a comment that isn't just guilt by association. Or from the 1800s, preferably. Yeah. Come just at me with something that's not a recycled, debunked 30 times worn out dead horse from the guy that gave the guy that gave the guy that gave your guy that gave you his divinity school degree okay you know what i'm saying let, let let's yeah. try something fresh here okay Back i'm looking to for words. fresh i'm looking for fresh here mm -hmm. we go this is gonna be fresh he was his reputation is one of a guy who was kind of like a scam artist you know he would do fortune telling and things like this Joseph Smith is recorded that he made a prophecy that the city and temple, which would be the center of Mormonism, would be in Missouri and would be founded by Joseph Smith. Well, to this day, that plot of land is, is vacant, like as far as any sort of temple or Mormon building goes. Over a hundred years later, you could say that about Jerusalem. <laughs> you could literally say, "Oh, that Joseph, uh, that Jesus Christ guy, oh, I got who the said quote. he was going to raise." I got it. No, I got, got it. it? Okay. Matthew. Okay. Actually, let's just have him finish real quick. Yeah. He's going to finish so the thought on the whole. Okay. Yeah, well, uh, I'm sorry. I'm the one that interrupted there. One of the church leaders says, I think it's safe to say it's not going to happen now. Okay. So 100 years later, it's not going to happen now. So he's taking it from Doctrine and Covenants 84, saying that 
in this generation. That's the timeline that it gives. In this generation, the temple is yes. going to be built. Well, in Matthew 24, 33 through 34, after speaking about all the signs of the last days, Jesus Christ himself says, So likewise ye, when ye shall see all these things, know that it is near even at the doors. Verily I say unto you, this generation shall not pass till all these things be fulfilled. And when you go, and I'm sure Mike Winger, right, just when you like hear this, I proclaim unto you the generation of Christ, there's you're, you're gonna know, you're gonna know, Mike yeah. Winger's automatically gonna know the response to that. Just take your response to that saying by Christ, apply it to Joseph Smith. And and the funny thing is the Joseph Smith translation, which Mike lambasts, changes this to this generation in which these things shall be shown, shall not pass away until all shall be fulfilled. So Joseph Smith fixes Christ's apparently not fulfilled prophecy about this generation in the Bible and then has a prophecy about this generation. And Mike Winger has a problem with one and not the other. So mm -hmm. it's just like a double standard. That's the problem. And I just want to say, in addition to what we're going with right now, as he's talking about um, Joseph Smith's prophecies, why doesn't he talk about all the ones that came true? Like, oh, yeah. why, why doesn't he talk about all the correct ones? Also, I, I hate to sound the esoter be the esotericist, um, but you know, you know how a lot of the um, uh, the prophecies of Christ um, were going to be fulfilled when he comes back. And he's going to come back with numerous angels and, and, and the resurrected prophets. Uh, I wonder if one of those prophets is Joseph Smith, who's going to come back and, and complete the new Jerusalem as Zion is built. I, I wonder if this is a part of a grand ending to the story of humanity. That that's hasn't kind happened of what yet. It seems like. Yeah. And if you were to say that, oh, it can't be done with Joseph Smith, it sounds like you're saying it can't be done with Jesus Christ. In which case, what are you even here for? <laughs> and we're not Go work saying at a that Joseph Queen. Smith is Jesus Christ. Yeah, the, but one of his prophets. Okay, mm. uh, let's continue. I'll, I'll slap you. I'll slap you with a quick another one. Jonah preached yet forty days, and Nineveh shall be overthrown. Was Nineveh overthrown? No. 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 And God saw their works that they turned from away from their evil way, and God repented of the evil that He'd said He would do concerning them. So that's God changing His mind about a prophecy that was made based on the works of the people. And you see things like that within the doctrine and covenants as well with the early members of the church. Yeah. Dude, we are an hour. Yeah. Let's, we got to have okay, less. Yeah. No, this, okay. this will be the last what video if we on get the through first segment. Four, our four clips and four then clips. we stop and then part two will be the other clips. Okay. That's fine. Cool. That's fine. Okay. Or we save it for another time. Whatever. We're going to, well, we will, we, we will finish this. And okay. Let's keep going. Pastor Mark Winger. This is one of the most inflammatory things I think about Joseph Smith. Ooh. He, he literally clip. made up a verse, added it to the Bible and wrote it about himself. Uh, most Mormons don't know any of this stuff. Right? They, they're, they're we don't know any of this stuff except for in every recycled, angry, evangelical, anti-Mormon <laughs> book that gets published ad nauseum well, and the recycled. Funny is, the funny by thing the, is he admits this because he say they don't learn this stuff till they go on their mission and all the anti-Mormon evangelicals tell him it. <laughs> oh, Wait, let's, so let he admits it. So, so the 17-year-olds who are still trying to figure out Wait, why do, their voice is cracking. Do you guys know what he's talking about? Do you, go, do you know what Mike Winger's talking about with Joseph Smith writing in the Bible that he's really mad about? The, uh, oh, I don't know the exact verse because they said he did that in like gonna, 10 places. Well, let's let him. Yeah, which one is he going for? Which one's he going? We'll show you. They're just not. They don't talk about it, and when they discover it, they're not really encouraged to talk about it with other Mormons. He he had over 40 or around 40 wives. Oh, okay. I'll say it because I I cut out because you read the whole thing. It's Joseph Smith adding into the Book of Genesis the prophecy about Joseph Smith that was made by Joseph in Egypt. Yes. He says, they don't know about this. It's in Second Nephi chapter three yeah. that according to Lynn Wilder, we have to read all the time. Uh -huh. Like it's in there. Yeah. That's... We know that Joseph Smith produced scripture that says that Joseph in Egypt prophesied about him. And all that does is show that we take our scripture seriously, that if we believe the Bible to be the word of God, as long as it is translated correctly, and we also believe the Book of Mormon to be the word of God, that words of God have some kind of synthesis. It's like atheists that say, oh, the scriptures can't be true because they don't get along with each other because the synoptic gospels have different stories told in different orders and that shows they are not internally coherent and they debunk each other. He's literally only doing what atheists do to Christianity or what the Sanhedrin did yeah. to Jesus Christ. Mark, <laughs> you, Mark Winger, you need to come Mike. up. Mike Winger, oh, sorry. <laughs> Mike Winger, you need to come up with arguments that aren't just recitations of the Sanhedrin or of atheists going after Christians. And this is exactly what Trent Horn has in his When Evangelicals Argue Like Atheists series. And, and maybe this is something that should be coming along later, but I'll try to keep this quick. Mike, seek and ye shall find. If you are looking for problems, you will find them. 
You, this is something that you'll see with the Bible as well as the Book of Mormon. But if you have the opportunity to see that this testament of Jesus Christ further solidifies that Jesus Christ was resurrected from the dead, com- lived his life, and then died for our sins, and came and taught this to further people and in the Americas, that this is another witness of the entire world. This follows the witness model in the Bible that you have the Bible itself and the Book of Mormon testifying of Jesus Christ as the Savior of the world. How much do you gain from that? Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's just like in, I, I got to dig up this verse, but you remember in the, I think I believe it's the book of Matthew, where some of the apostles approach Jesus and say, hey, there's people over here that aren't in our group that are, you know, casting out devils in thy name and healing in thy name and so on and so forth. He says, hey, if they're not against us, they're with us, right? You know, like they're doing good things out of a positive fruit. I mean, a font can only come positive water out of negative font can only come negative water. You know, let them be. And then Gamaliel, the famous Gamaliel saying, hey, you know, don't fight these guys because you might accidentally be guilty of fighting against the works of God. And if it's not the works of God, it'll fail. Right. I have respect for pastors that want to approach with curiosity like Pastor Jeff. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. That's cool. I don't think he's converting to Mormonism anytime, anytime, anytime soon. But let me tell you, he will find a friend. He, it, with the, one arm in the body of Christ will find a leg in the body of Christ. They can work together and to fight against the the demon that is the religion of wokeism. Okay. Which Mike does do a fantastic job. Which, uh, yeah, well, that at. used to be why I listened to him. Until now, I'm questioning whether or not he makes coherent arguments against wokeism. If the, he can't well, the even thing is, like the thing is, he knows the Bible. Yeah. But if he's no, to, he doesn't, or else he wouldn't be saying we're misquoting. <laughs> I, no, he, he knows the he, Bible pretty he well. Clearly, does he not knows know what the Mormon. pastors have told him to think the Bible says? But he still reads it a lot and studies, and I, I think he does do um, some Greek. To take and, us home and 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 on a cool note. Um, <laughs> uh, this last thing he was quoting about, you know, Who said anything uh, about ending. Oh, oh yeah, we're gonna end this podcast. <laughs> Joseph, of, you know, he's like, oh well, he wrote, he wrote himself into a prophecy of Joseph of Egypt. It's very well established in our church that Joseph Smith and Joseph of Egypt have very similar lives. Like they, they are archetypes of one another. Yep. This is well established. And one of the most interesting things, what did we discover about Joseph of Egypt far after Joseph Smith's ministry? That Joseph of Egypt used mm. glowing stones to mm. read into the future that he placed inside of a silver cup mm. to hide out the light. Yep. Oh, interesting. I didn't know that. I have not yeah. heard about this. Yeah. Joseph of Egypt and Joseph Smith are extremely similar. They are Yeehaw. so similar Mormon offshoot people think they're reincarnations. The same people? <laughs> I'm not kidding. Yeah, yeah. That's how cool. similar their lives are. So, I love some of these offshoots. And man. Joseph Smith would have like had to plan his life to go in line yeah. with Joseph in Egypt. If Joseph back Smith when he knew that. Oh, this. he would have ran with it. But he didn't. Yeah. Even <laughs> and, it's, and it's not. And it's not like right. the missionaries went around and said, "Hey, look, this is actually in the Bible." See, Mike, you kind of actually disprove yourself because you say they don't know this at all. Well, if Joseph Smith is very nefariously putting himself in the Bible, he'd be doing that to like prove to people why he was legit. Well, and here's so the then, if thing. we don't know about it, how is he fulfilling? Like, it doesn't make sense. Yeah. You're just adopting whatever. It's position, a nonsensical yeah, argument. You're adopting whatever position is needed to make us look as bad as possible, and, and I don't appreciate it. And, and I'm catching the kind of mean Apologia Studios vibe here because he's, he says, "Oh, most Mormons don't know it, you know, until they serve missions and things like that." Yeah, because. Before you're an 18-year-old missionary, you're a 16-year-old acne-filled kid who's trying to figure out why his voice is cracking, how to get his driver's license, and how to not look stupid in front of girls. Maybe you haven't done a deep dive into, you know, Deutero Isaiah. And by the way, our 18-year-olds consistently beat your 18-year-olds in biblical knowledge, all right? All the surveys show that the average Pew member- Research 2014. Yeah, yep. Pew Research yep. in 2014 said that the average member of the Church of Jesus Christ, the average youth in the member- of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints knows more than your average youth member was. What About the Bible. About the Bible. And we've got the Book of Mormon and Doctrine and Covenants in the last however many years of general And when did you to go to divinity well. school? <laughs> yeah. When did you go to divinity school, Mike Winger? In your 20s? In your 30s? So you're dogging on teenagers, pre-mission teenagers, for not understanding the intricate workings of the Old and New Testament that you didn't understand until divinity school. 
And if you've read through the Book of Mormon and paid attention, you would know about the Joseph Egypt prophecy. Yes. It's just not true because it's right in there. Uh, it's yeah, like a full okay. six verses in the book of Second Nephi. And it's three. cruel. And it's actually a really cool prophecy too. Yeah. I didn't have to look up the reference. No, nope, not at I just, not at I all. just know it. It's Second Nephi 3. Mm-hmm. Okay. It's awesome. So I know I don't exude Christ-like love, so I can't call him Yet. out for not exuding Christ-like love. Yeah. I don't sense any of that here. But then again, people watching me right now probably I don't think, either. So I'll I try still, to be better. I'm still contending he's good faith. Yeah, let's keep it going. Okay. I'm saying he's good faith, just very misinformed. Let's yeah. get to the well, lies. Well, you, sir, have been misinformed. Okay, yeah. so here yeah. we go. Joseph Smith movie. 40 yeah. 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 started teaching only a select small group of people that Restart poly- this one? Uh, excuse me, polygamy was now accepted by God. He's okay, going so here we go. 40 wives. When he secretly started teaching only a select small group of people that poly uh, excuse me polygamy was now accepted by god and so he got married sometimes behind his wife's back uh, there's one story about his wife finding them in the barn together 11 of the women that joseph Smith- it wasn't his wife that was actually a different individual oh. okay him, let him so the, let let's, let's i well, just the gotta co- let him the co- this is all polygamy go okay. already married and and then some say well he didn't you know sleep with them and it's like well really you think he stopped there <laughs> All right, let's so talk what about they the, do is they let's talk about the cod in the barn. Okay. So this was reported many years so allegedly it's Joseph Smith and some young girl caught in a barn in the act, quote unquote. This was reported many years later after it apparently happened by apostate William McClellan, who didn't have exactly the cleanest record himself. Mm-hmm. He later said that the transaction, quote unquote, the MS on the barn, was the first polygamous ceiling to a Mrs. Hill. So different than getting caught in that way in the barn. Then he later claimed that it was Fanny Alger, a different person than Mrs. Hill, who was the first polygamous wife. So we have a later source who's not that, uh, you know, he has a lot of motivations to smear Joseph Smith. And the story is three different ways. But Mike Winger just took the worst story, said it was completely true and put it out there. Do you remember when we were debunking the CES letter? Yep. And I came across rule like number nine of... Uh, the anti-Mormon rules, the Ten yep. Commandments of anti-Mormon rules, that they always accidentally quote Nazis. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> uh-huh. Like they're so desperate to come up on dirt on Joseph Smith in the 1800s and early 1900s and the um, the priesthood ban and the Curse of Cain doctrine that they accidentally in the CES letter quoted literal Nazi archaeologists. Mm-hmm. That's how desperate they were to dig up dirt on the Mormon church. Mark Winger is so desperate Desp- not Mark. Mike Winger is so desperate to find dirt on the Mormon church that he's he's just willing to quote citations that would not hold up in a real university. Apparently they hold up in divinity school, you know, and he's willing to quote <laughs> apostates okay. that literally led to the slaughter at the hands of a militia from the government and a mob from the other Protestants. Hundreds of Mormons in Nauvoo in one month. I just want to. Comment. So he'll quote murderers and they'll quote Nazis in order to try and dig up dirt on the church. So um, I just think it's interesting that the woman he's interviewing decided to go print out a poster of Mike Winger. Well, okay. <laughs> like, so, so what's going this, on here? <laughs> this this woman is the woman who is putting this event on, and they have invited Mike Winger to come on for two hours and. Help them to debunk uh, ah. Mormonism to like all and their he friends. He is they the go best and... they could find. Well, actually, yes. He is like the YouTube pastor. Ah, well, at least if he and comes and talks is, to us, he and, can sharpen his arguments and nothing else. Yeah. You know, like, yeah. And the thing is, Mike Winger is actually like compared to Apologia, he's very nice. He, he doesn't try to control things. Oh, I mean, he's, he doesn't record his, uh, uh, his, his. His church congregants confessing and use it as blackmail against them later? Not that I'm aware of. That's also, crazy that they did that. <laughs> that's that's crazy they got away with that. <laughs> that's wild. Uh, he even <laughs> has a video saying why Calvinism is wrong, so like points for that. Okay. Well. Ah, there you go. Yeah. Uh, we can agree on that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, okay. well, so I've got sure some common right, ground. That's for none Jeez, of them I'm in a bad mood now. Hey, yeah. well, okay. <laughs> okay, let's finish. Any, really any other thoughts on polygamy before we go? Oh, here's my I, thought. I think it. he's 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 clearly pulling from nefarious sources. We, like, we actually we have another. The, our other guy is going to also talk about polygamy when we react to him. Well, so we don't me, have to hit all the. At arguments. this point, okay. the polygamy argument is only a further testimony of the truth of the Book of Mormon, because what we're seeing right now in the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter Day Saints is we are seeing rifts in the church regarding polygamy. We've interviewed these people, right, of these people who think, oh, he was not a polygamist, Um, and and then people who think, oh, it was just Brigham Young, and people who think, no, Joseph really, really, really did it and really enjoyed it. No, he was a reluctant. 
But it seems that they all can agree that the Book of Mormon is true and that these revelations are from heaven. Mm -hmm. That is how strong the Book of Mormon is, where those who are disagreeing about what they're considering to be the nature of multiplied adultery still can't disprove or discredit the Book of Mormon. Mm -hmm. So, and by the way, I don't think he's going to give, he, he's going to represent this at all, his audience. He's just going to pick the most uh, uh, salacious nar- sounding yeah, thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, they're having sex in a holiday inn or whatever his, it was. And that was his literal justification was, I don't think they stopped there. It was you no think he evidence, would stop there. No evidence of any kind. Like literally, the only person who insinuated that there was illicit relations with women of other um, other married couples was John C. Bennett, who is not a friend of Joseph Smith this at the was time after that he made he that. He tried so to convince women to have sex with him. Yes, real, yes. When, when you're married the top women. guy in your city that you basically own, and you can have access to any room you want. At any given notice, because everybody loves you, you're gonna settle on the in 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 the haystack next to the goat. And look, and you're, you're, I, stealing, and I, you're, you're stealing my thunder. I was trying to be like not interrupt after <laughs> well, what well, happened oh, yesterday. I'm sorry, yeah, yeah. But I do have to say, I'm getting tired of noticing that all of these internet pastors that try and go after polygamy. You know how you say that you want your law of chastity talks to be given by guys that could actually pull girls? You know what I'm saying? Oh, God, I no. noticed that all the people this? that go after Joseph Smith, all right, and polygamy <laughs> seem to be a little bit beta, me thinks. Mike. Okay? Garden. And Sorry. I, 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 no, I'm just saying that if Joseph Smith, as a man who did not struggle in that department, <laughs> with the power that Joseph Smith had, it is obvious if you were just in it for the booty, like you guys constantly insinuate through your veiled vagaries, okay? If you were just in it through the booty, for the booty, he would obviously have gotten tenfold the amount of chicks that he wanted because he was ten times the man you are. Physically, emotionally, spiritually, intellectually, yeah. okay? Ten times. So obviously he wasn't just in it for the booty. What was he in it for, then we ask ourselves? If you actually read the primary sources, instead of the 50-year-old journal articles of apostates from the church who murdered Mormons, okay? If you actually read the primary sources of people he was married to and defended the practice, the families he engaged in polygamy with and asked to practice polygamy with, it was obvious he was trying to unite the entire human family because he saw the importance of us all being brothers and sisters under the umbrella of God. So much so that the early polygamists were marrying like 65 year olds that had no one to take care of them. Yeah. There were ceilings of men to men, not homosexually, but as brothers, yeah. as or brothers. Like ceilings to the and, dead prophet Joseph and all and, that. Yeah. But wait, if, if Joseph, okay, so we're just going to assume that Joseph Smith was having sex with at least a fair amount of these people fairly often. Well, we know he had the ability to create children. I think he had like six or seven with Emma, but we have zero. We have some possibilities, but we have zero from apparently these dozens, at least a couple dozen, um, at least half a dozen way, women that he's apparently engaging in inner I mean they didn't have the pill they didn't have quite the these possibilities you mentioned are all debunked yeah. long shots like so, uh, yeah and I'm not saying he didn't at all but you can't just throw a uh, you'd think he stopped there and then not be able <laughs> just not have any I can I have family trees and genetic tests that show this actually <laughs> happened yeah it's not like he was on a sh- freaking episode we of know Maury. That Joseph had the ability to Procreate. Produce children. He was he was prolific in multiple senses, and yeah. that was one of them. Okay, so anyway, let's. What was the name of that daytime show where they always choose through the genetic testing who the father was? Uh, Jer- they, Jerry Springer. No, not Jerry Springer. It was Maury, right? It was no, called, Jerry Springer was always the you are not the father, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, okay. yeah. Or is that sure. Maury? Yeah. I don't know. Oh, you know, I don't know. I know it, it was Maury. Yeah, it was Maury. And there was the funny dancing when it. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, cool. This wasn't right. an episode of Maury. All right. Anyway, um, here we go. We're going to go to clip three um, with Pastor Mike Winger. So what they do is they they take the Book of Mormon and they use that and their other scriptures because they have other books too. And they use that to test the Bible to see if it's been maybe altered or changed. They just assume that their stuff's right and the Bible's wrong. But Where did uh, you get that from? Kind of like you just assume that your Bible's right and the Book of Mormon's wrong. Anyway, keep going. But the Bible says it's the other way around, that we should actually test new revelation based on old revelation. You test a current prophet based upon what God has previously revealed. 
in Deuteronomy 13, we have this as well. It says, if a prophet or dreamer of dreams arises among you and gives you a sign or wonder, and the sign or wonder that he tells you. Uh, yeah, what? He is speaking with the spirit of the crucifiers. <laughs> oh. He is literally making the exact same argument that the Jews did when they were proving, quote unquote, proving that Jesus was a false messiah. Yeah. I mean, this is this is crazy. Not realizing that the same authority that Jesus Christ held is the same authority given to Moses. This that those same commandments, and because of that authority, has the power to deviate and shift. And thus it is with the the restoration, that same authority. But for you to say, well, don't you know? Jesus said to pick flowers on the Sabbath, but you're not allowed to pick flowers. Jesus said, it is written, but I say unto you, that means he's he's prophesying with a different spirit. That means he can't trust. Who would he have been? If Mike was born in the meridian of time, who would he have been? You know, it's oh, true. Man. If you look at this, he's literally got a quote from the book of Deuteronomy on the screen in order to condemn the Mormons. The book of Deuteronomy is literally the law of Moses. And what did the Sanhedrin, Sanhedrin say when they were accusing Jesus Christ? They said, we have the law of Moses and the law is what condemns you. Yeah. And so, I mean, who would he have been? Yeah. On what side of the mob would he have been on? Yeah, that's I mean, good. really think about this. This is I've been yeah. saying this the whole podcast. You've been calling me a jerk when I said that no, the mob I, was just the Mike Wingers of the 1840s and 50s. You said it in a much more diplomatic way, to be oh, fair. Okay. Honestly, <laughs> it's kind of weekend update. It's like the, the yeah. two anchors and they bring in like <laughs> Pete Davidson or Chris Farley to be like the wild card. It's it's going to be OK. So here, let's let him yeah, finish. We're, we're helping yeah. you. Let's let him finish his um, attack. Well, okay, of Jesus so Christ. It, well, he's saying that you're supposed to test the old scripture by the new scripture. OK, so he's saying what the evangelicals do that we are not doing is they base the new testament in the fact that it conforms with the old testament two points number one where's the trinity in the old testament yeah because that's one of their biggest arguments against us and the you you came up with a different god all that stuff show me the trinity in the old testament yep not there just not there number two yeah, the old testament needs to well, conform actually, with no, the new testament. I got, but then I'm going to interrupt you, have, you. Make that a question. That's a question, Mike. Yeah, Winger. to Mike Winger. Mike, yeah, just you, respond to me. You can just cut out their clips. Yeah, and act like it's just <laughs> no. Why don't you hey, look I down the barrel? Nice. No, no, no. You have look you down have. the barrel of the camera and say, Mike Winger. But I'm if th- we have to test new revelation against old and reject new revelation that doesn't conform with the old, where is the Trinity in the Old Testament? Yeah. Try it. Just try it, Luke. What? Do your challenge oh. question to Mar- Mike Winger. Mike Winger, assuming you are correct that everything in Scripture has to be you know, found in the original Scripture before you can add new Scripture unto it, and one of the big problems you have with us is the Godhead and we change God, I'd be interested in knowing where you get the Trinity from the Old Testament without grammar tricks or weird historical documents or anything like that, but actual mainstream Old Testament Judaism. Where was the Trinity in there? Okay, that That's was good. much more diplomatic. Um, yeah, we'll move on. And okay. one, one thing that I just want to add, he's making an assertion without evidence that we this is what just, Mormons do. No, My ancestors who first joined the church did so because the Bible inspired them to do so. They read things like in Thessalonians where it says to try the spirits and test, try all things, hold fast that which is true, right? And to test the prophecies. They were looking for the truth, and that's what they found. What are you looking for, Mike? Are yeah. you looking for what's true? That paycheck, brother? <laughs> or, yeah, that pay- or, or, or are you just looking to be right? It, it, it doesn't have to yeah. necessarily be tied to his paycheck. This is, I, I would invite you to consider and maybe pray and ask God to help you understand what is it that you're looking for. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna. Krishna, Krishna, Hare Hare. <laughs> yeah, Hare Rama, Hare Rama. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Rama, Hare, Hare. But yeah, okay. Is forward. that just because you're doing the Hare Krishna temple? Uh, I really, I will, I will Did provide, it. I don't think Mike Winger's speaking from any experience where he says that we like look at the Book of Mormon and then we try and decipher what parts of the Bible aren't true because we, no, that's just, yeah. that's complete and, and junk. I'm, I'm but, sure there are some Mormons who have done that, but we're, it's not like we're exactly. taught to do that. But 
I do understand when you are a past like Jeff Durbin does when he goes out with Apology Studios and he backs these people up against the wall with here's this quote from Isaiah that has been debunked a couple times and here's John one here's this they are kind of backed up against the wall and you're the you're the one that's putting the pressure on them and putting this very uncomfortable situation so they propose as a possible solution maybe that part of the Bible was translated wrong but it's not actually like they're they're proposing that as a possibility because you're shoving them into a corner and confronting them with all this stuff instead of letting them go and research it and get back to you they're proposing as in the interim a possible explanation of maybe that part of the bible is mistranslated mm -hmm. i but granted i don't think that's a very helpful thing for us to do yeah if you don't know an answer just say i don't know i'm gonna go read robert boylan's blog and get back to you and be prepared exactly yeah one thing's for sure robert boylan would mop the floor as a volunteer enthusiast of ancient scripture, all of this paid clergy. I don't think there's a North American pastor that could stand up to Robert Boylan on this show. And he's Irish. Yeah, and he's Irish. And he went to divinity school. He did. Cardin. Oh, he did? Yeah. yeah. Just saying. Is he a convert? Mm -hmm. he's, yeah, he yeah. was Catholic. Catholic. Oh, okay. That's cool. Hey, we're the OGs of Christ's authority, the Catholics and the Mormons. That's right. You know what I'm saying? You I know the, the, Hugh Nibley, the Hugh Nibley quote? where a Catholic priest comes to Hugh Nibley and he spends some time at BYU, researches the Mormons a little bit, and he says at the end, he says, you Mormons are complete imbeciles. Huh? You have no idea the strength of your position. It's either you or the Catholics and you don't even know it. Uh -huh. Yeah, exactly, dude. So boom, we're going to have some pints with Aquinas. You know what I'm saying? Have you oh, ever I seen that, that YouTube yeah. channel, Pints with Aquinas? Those guys got style. That's they're like bright. selling <laughs> mugs that look like they're 500 years old or something. Oh, nice. So, so yeah, I'm, actually, I should reach out to those guys. Mm -hmm. So anyway, here we go. We're almost done. I'm only going to let this go another 10 minutes before I have a hemorrhage here. All right. <laughs> So, um, so here we go. Number four or yeah. comes to pass. And if he says, let us go after other gods, which you have not known and let us serve them. You shall not listen to the words of that prophet or that dreamer of dreams for the Lord. Your God is testing you to know whether you love the Lord, your God with all your heart and with all your soul. You could literally disqualify Jesus for having introduced the concept of the Holy Ghost in the New Testament that doesn't show up in the Old Testament. If you wanted to follow that logic in Deuteronomy. Well, and he's saying, well, he's he's. Yeah. They kind of give different standards based on what they want to do. So this yeah. one is the prophet needs to prophesy something. It needs to come true. So John the Baptist is not a prophet. Ooh, what he did, did not he prophesy do that. that did not come true? Well, he didn't prophesy anything as far as I'm aware. Uh -huh. I mean, Christ was going to come, but that's what the Old Testament was already prophesying. Oh, so and, like, and what, did, what did David? Or miracles. What miracles did he do? David was a prophet. What did he Mm, yeah, that's true. So if you're dealing with Joseph Smith, you it's Elder Holland. You have to crawl under, over, or around the Book of Mormon. You can't like, oh, we have no evidence. He's the Book of Mormon, which you did a horrible job debunking earlier in this video. As okay, we've demonstrated. So here's the uh, last video. I'm giving us. I'm giving us nine minutes and one second. Ooh, okay. that might take nine a minutes and one second. So here we go. Pastor Mike Testimony. Winger, also known as Nicodemus. The testimony in a uh, in a Mormon context is the word means a lot of a different thing than what it means to most Christians. Most Christians are thinking testimony is either um, me testifying, declaring, you know, my, my faith in Christ, or that's also it our is definition. me telling yep. you the story of, of sort of how God has worked in my mm -hmm. life. Yep, that's also about that, right. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Wait, but what's our version? Let's let, let yeah, him let's tell let us him what our version tell is. Tell us what we believe. Yeah. Okay, so this is again where they just put up some kind of weird straw man argument. Okay, mm -hmm. cool. Let's see what he says our beliefs are. How he's changed my life as I as I have trusted in him. In the Mormon view, the testimony is, it refers to like a moment when you just felt strongly that the Mormon church was true. So it, it refers to like a moment where you had like a feeling um, but the problem with this is it's not a struggle session. It's not an AA meeting. Oh, let him go. Yeah, let him finish. <laughs> let him okay, finish. okay. Gonna... That, you know, Satan can give you feelings too. Oh, boy. Your heart can deceive you. The Bible says that the heart of man is deceitful and desperately wicked. And that's all it says. And about so the they're heart, literally mm -hmm. testing their theology with their feelings at this point. They ask you to share your testimony, kind of whether you feel it or not. And to continue bearing your testimony. And as you proclaim these things are true, these five things over and over, you say it's true. They say that when you say it, it will grow your testimony or your conviction that it's true. All right. So, so every pastor's kid that I've ever seen at a revival give his witness of Jesus. 
oh yeah, that's an abusive pastor. That's not an abusive pastor that's compelling his child. Or maybe you just, like the Apostle Paul said, have the milk before the meat. That you start out with a small step. You so teach your kids about God. So if somebody went to Mike Winger and explained to him a born again experience they would have, it's fan- he'd be fantastic. That's amazing. And I think he'd actually mean that. Yes. But somehow all of a sudden it's us saying, I believe that Christ has returned to the earth again and appointed servants that he actually has authorized again and, you know, given us new scripture again. And you strongly have that wonderful feeling. And he uses the word feeling, spiritual witness, men in your heart, you know, men and brethren, what shall we do after they're pricked in your hearts? Mm-hmm. Yeah, all this yes. stuff is is it's, in the Bible. So, Blessed art thou, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood hath not made it unto you, but the feelings that are in your heart, which are wicked, and actually, no, let's <laughs> yeah, walk yeah. at this back a bit, and I'm going to take you through like a Socratic method, yeah. witnesses it, it model of, out. let's, no, it's, Blessed art thou, Simon Barjona, for flesh and flesh and blood, the scientific method, evidences, hath not made it known unto thee, but my Father in heaven, presumably through the Spirit, bearing witness to his heart, hath made it known unto you. And there's no and, coherence in their arguments, because when you ask Mike Winger, how did you know that your wife was the one you should marry? Because I see a wedding ring on his hand. He's probably going to reference, I knew it in my heart. Well, I thought the heart only tells you wickedness and you, you combine, you know, and, combine and the see, two. this is the thing. Mike, you know that the Bible is completely in support of you receiving spiritual revelation. It talks about that often enough, that you know God can communicate with you. So why would you go out of your way to only quote this single verse to make it sound as though the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints is just being inspired of the devil when in fact a great deal of verses in the Bible actually support that we can receive communication from God. So he tries to make it, he tries to make it seem like we're a cult because he says it's just this moment where you felt something and you're encouraged mm-hmm. to go Kind of and, like your born again experience and you you're, remember the day you get a tattooed on your shoulder you're and you show it to your pastor. To go, you're encouraged to go up in front of everybody and explain this experience that you've had or bear your testimony, even if you don't exactly feel it. Because, and he's, he's trying to make it like a cult. Yep. So you just say it over and over again until you believe it. Where is he getting that from? He's getting it from a quote, I presume, by Boyd K. Packer, where he said, I have often found a testimony is gained in the bearing of it. He's basing it off of that one quote, which is one sentence of our broader understanding of what testimony is. Yep. Just like the... Peter getting a spiritual witness is one part of Christians' understanding of how you believe things. Yep. This isn't this isn't cultish. You get we, better at praying by praying. You, how you many never, evangelical pastors have said well, if we're going you get to better evidence, at praying by praying? If we're going to evidence, <laughs> scientifically, psychologically, you learn things in practice. You don't just like personally think about things and have a testimony, but when you're actually bearing your testimony, I'd actually contend it's a lot in your actions as well as actually in testimony meeting when you're actually going and acting on the small amount of light you have received that's when you receive more do you have faith lord i believe helpest thou my unbelief okay through his action that's what we're talking about here it's not a cult thing that's true jesus christ repeat repeat until you have convinced yourself in your head it's no act on the small particle the mustard seed of faith that you have and as you do you gain that greater witness Okay, yeah, you know, Jesus Christ saying to the man who brought his son to him to be healed, saying, helpest thou me mine unbelief, is ultimate proof that Jesus Christ understands this is a mustard seed and growth process that you get better at it as you get older and more Jesus Christ asks yeah. people to bear their testimony to get testimonies. Yeah, okay. It's the same exact process that we're talking about. This is, are you, how do you, I don't see how you think this guy's a good faith actor because he is either woefully no, incompetent. He, the he, only way he could be acting with good faith right now is if he were blisteringly incompetent which I do not see him as it's being. That you, sir, have been misinformed. Yes. Okay. And, I think you're just trying of... to score internet points with this guy to get an interview. You know no, what I'm uh, saying? Pardon, pardon, look. So, no, because imagine, cause, imagine, put yourself in his shoes for a second, right? All he, of your youth are leaving for the Mormon church because it's more internally coherent no, no, and no. gives them a closer relationship well, with God. Let and me you want to stop it. the bleeding like it's, all the pastors in the 1860s had to try and stop the bleeding. So they made up lies. Now you're just recycling their lies. So in our terms, we are dealing with, like, he is dealing with general Christianity and Protestantism evangelicals, right? He has done stuff to debunk Calvinism. He's done stuff with all of these different groups, right? For us, we know a decent amount about 
the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. We interact with the Calvinists and some evangelicals. We know a little bit about the community of Christ. We know a little bit about the um, FLDS even. But there are little tiny breakoffs that we never really interact with that we probably wouldn't know very much about if someone wanted to talk to us about it. I agree with you that he should have done better research before coming onto this show, and I think that maybe he'll recognize that if he looks into what he has presented. But I don't think the only options are he's either a liar or an idiot. You know, we need to give him a better out than that. Than, no, no, no. And how and hard the, do you beat your wife? Yeah, yeah. yeah exactly. <laughs> right. Like we, I didn't say those. It was liar or idiot. I said he's lying about something, either his authority on the subject or about the subject itself. OK. OK. Yeah. Which is only one percent better of what is that effect what you is that effect say? called the the dunning kruger, dunning -Kruger effect. effect yeah dunning kruger effect yeah, so, okay but that's kind of like self um deception yes i don't so, know if it's intentional exactly well, because school, so divinity many divinity people say these things yes. that you'd have to kind of almost be crazy paranoid not to believe it well divinity school degrees do that to you <laughs> So, hey, uh, I mean, DeVry, DeVry makes you think that you've got a university's degree as well. So, um, <laughs> at but, least they know. don't make you think you're a woman. Like, okay, that's true. Yeah. That's true. <laughs> so, University <laughs> of Phoenix Divinity School graduate Mike Winger telling us what we get, where we go wrong. Is that um, where he went? No, but University of Phoenix. You know, oh, that was just the joke. It's gotcha, where you pay gotcha, to gotcha. get a degree. I was like, you know? are you serious? It's okay. like Divinity <laughs> schools. You pay to get a degree as long as you recite what they tell you to. Okay. So, okay, so, let's him, let him so this is kind of like brainwashing. Just say it, ah! and say it, it, and eventually you'll believe it. Mm -hmm. They gather That's not how and it works. they. Not how right after we call him brainwashed by a divinity school degree, he says we're brainwashed. That's funny. New All right, guys. Sharing. This is what they do. They get up and they share a testimony. It might be something else, but everyone's supposed to do these five things, and it's kind of what? pressure from. So we're we're back what at the five, five things? things. What's this it's five the same, thing? So I sent you a file. I don't know if you can pull it up right now, but in Lynn the same, said this. yeah. So Lynn Wilder talked about they have this five part testimony and they're supposed to say the five parts and Jesus Christ is only one of them. So he's only one fifth of their church. Really? But this is oh. what it is. This I found where it came from because he showed the picture. OK, so I'm going to see if I can't pull this up right now. Yes, yeah, so we got Mike uh, Winger. It's the only picture file in there down at the bottom. Testimony glove. Testimony. OK, glove? so here we are. Yep. What is this thing? Oh, is it on the. Is it on the video? I'll find a way to get in the video, but you describe okay. what it is really fast. Yeah, so okay? this is from this is from a friend from like 2008, I believe, and it is from a few uh, bullet points. The in friend a, being a magazine pub published by the church. Yes, yeah. yes, in a 2006 general conference talk by Cardin's going to love this Elder Uchtdorf. Okay, where he talks about how there are if you have a testimony of the gospel, it's going to include these points, and then it's. I don't oh, have the okay. pictures in front of me, but oh. it's like Jesus Christ, Restoration, Book of Mormon, something, something. See, I okay. can't even name them all. Yeah. So this, these five things. The funny thing is, in the, the general conference talk, the word or number five doesn't even pop up. It's just oh, that's some fun. publisher. Oh, interesting. Some, okay, so we got the first vision, Jesus Christ, Joseph Smith, the, the blessings and covenants of the temple mm -hmm. and testimony of the Lord having a yeah. current prophet on the earth, which okay. at the time was Thomas S. Monson. So it, I don't know who, like, did Lynn Wilder popularize this? Or like someone was reading the Friend magazine and saw this single picture from it and decided that we all talk to each other about our five-part testimony all the time. And this is like some... And, and his conception of testimony meeting is everybody's encouraged, like, okay, it's your turn next, it's your turn next, it's your turn next, to go up to the pulpit and to say these five things <laughs> Rammy Umptum style yeah. and then go back and sit down this dude, when none of us have any idea what it is because it's some I, little kid activity from a single edition of The Friend 15 years ago. Where, where does Mike Winger... What state is he in? What, where is he? He's down uh, in Orange County, I think. Oh, is he really? He's a California. Because what I was going to say is go to a testimony meeting in Harlem and tell me <laughs> this five things is like what's going on. Go to a testimony meeting in L.A. See what happens. Go to an actual testimony meeting before speaking as an authority on this and see what happens. Like In another sure. video, he said after somebody bears their testimony for the first time, we all clap for them to like reinforce their it's like, okay, so you haven't been <laughs> to oh, a testimony God, meeting. No, we're we specifically told not to clap. It's Okay, so let, let's finish it. Let's let's yeah, <laughs> in Harlem. Who knows what's gonna happen, right? Um, trust me, LA's no better in some quarters. But let's uh, 
let's let's finish seeing what else he is going to say. Um, this is the last clip right here. So Pastor Mike Winger. Parents, like you're supposed to get up there and at some point bear your testimony and then you're kind of relieved. Oh, finally, I got my testimony. Like whenever a Mormon would come talk to me, they... <laughs> <laughs> the, okay, the I'm, resist, Carden. Resist. Don't no. do it. Resist. Press play. <laughs> Press play. Mike, I'm so sorry. This lady. I don't know what you're gonna say, but I know it's bad. Exactly like the last lady that served me at the DMV. Oh. Like she okay, literally was, is not the doppelganger. Like <laughs> yeah, it's like, did I stumble upon the lady that served me at the DMV? I was, I was expecting who something a horrible. Lady. To <laughs> <laughs> me too. Give me the Book of Mormon, and they would say. You need to pray and you need to ask the Holy Spirit that if this is the truth. And I'm like, I don't even need to do that <laughs> because I already have the truth. Interestingly, Mormonism is proven. Okay, this one's uh, over point, and over. Right? You'll see this from wait. And I just want to just just go back to what she said really fast. That's exactly what the Sanhedrin said that the Jews should say to Jesus. Mm -hmm. That we have like we are the seed of Abraham. Yes. We have no spiritual dead. Mm -hmm. We already have the truth because we have the law of Moses. Yep. So again, like 10 commandments of anti-Mormons rule number eight. Okay. They always end up quoting the Sanhedrin. If they're Christian, they always end up quoting the Sanhedrin. She just literally ended up quoting the Sanhedrin, condemning condemning Jesus, Jesus for saying, hey, look, you know, we're all sinners. We all need to pray. No. We don't have sinners because we come from the law of Moses, the bosom of Abraham. You know, uh, let's keep going. A Bible, a Bible. We have got a Bible. No, yeah, they, and that's rule number one. They never refute scripture. They only fulfill it. Yeah. That's right. Okay, cool. So here we go. The, from all the theologians, from all the, even the scholars in the Mormon church, they'll say, guys, I'll try to answer your archaeology question here. But in the end, it's all about faith. I wonder what it says in the Bible when it said we were like, Supposed to walk by faith and not by sight. I wonder yeah. hmm. the, the, why, why, what? You Jerusalem as a Christian, why exists. would you say this? Jerusalem exists and we literally have the holy city. Has that proven Jesus was the Christ to anybody? No. No. I've been to the Garden of Gethsemane. I've seen the witness trees that bore witness to the atonement of Jesus Christ. We archaeologically have taken core samples of the witness trees in the Garden of Gethsemane where Jesus Christ suffered for all our sins before the crucifixion. That has not proven Jesus was the Christ to any tourist that has gone by. It's a personal interaction and conviction that you get through your interaction with the Holy Ghost and God and Jesus Christ personally that gives you the conviction that he is the Christ. This is basic Christianity. Yeah, let's see. Is there okay. more about this and in this next thing or is, is it moving on? Yeah, there's more. Let's let's see. See. 30 seconds more. This is the last of it. But in the New Testament, the first Christians didn't say that. What they did was they proved Just who Paul. Jesus was. Just Paul said that. <laughs> uh, what, but keep going. Where did Paul say that? Uh, when, when, he, when Paul said that it, it, we are to walk by faith and not by sight. And, oh, you know, oh. we see through a glass darkly, right? Like, there's, yeah. there's a lot of these things. But mm -hmm. Okay, let's keep going. Hey, good point, Brad. Using the Old Testament, showing that what Jesus did was consistent with the Old Testament, fulfilled prophecy in Jesus and the witness of the resurrection, not internal feelings, but rather they saw him alive with their own eyes. And they would say, I was a witness. And people would, you know, were two or, two or three witnesses to confirm a matter. In other words, Christianity is a fact based belief <laughs> that was unexpected Carded. the guy that believes a dude rose from the dead which we're a, not saying didn't happen a guy we I know, agree with that no a guy that believes a virgin gave birth that a fact-based court of law in Los Angeles would never accept as scientific evidence. This cat right here has the stones to say Christianity that believes in talking donkeys in the Old Testament and men that survived through three days in fishes and whales and dudes that walked on water. He wants to tell me Christianity is a fact-based religion in, in order to... In the in, scientific sense. In the scientific sense, in order to indict the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, a.k.a. Mormons. 
This is below cynical, poor, and bad argumentation. This is below lying. This is below incompetence. This is the kind of tomfoolery that can only be propagated by paid pastors who are so desperate to recycle lies in order to get a paycheck. They resort to absolute sheer nonsense. And I don't think he believes what he's saying here. He, he obviously, if you go and read other stuff, if he's interacting with people, sharing personal experiences, he takes witnesses of the spirit seriously uh -huh. if they agree with him. Yeah. So I, I do think this part's a little disingenuous. Mike, I want you to just kind of realize that you, you shouldn't limit God to the scientific method. I don't think the Bible does that. I don't think Christianity does that. I don't think you do that until you're talking about us. Mm -hmm. And then all of a sudden it's like, oh, well, feelings. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The spirit can bear witness to your heart, and that can be a powerful thing that carries you through your life, just as it did to Peter. Last thing, blessed art thou, Solomon Barjona. Actually, I'm going to have a last thing, okay? Because <laughs> I pulled up a quote because he's he's making these claims about Christianity, but interestingly, Roman philosopher Celsus saw it a little bit differently. The apparent blind faith of the Christians was bewildering to Celsus, and he used it to further support his claim that Christianity was a false religion. In his opinion, the main tenet of Christianity was, quote, do not ask questions, just believe. The same thing that Mike Winger is accusing us of. So maybe it's not the case that we actually are a feelings-based cult, but maybe it's just because you, like Celsus, coming from your own biases, decide that because it's an easy rhetorical argument to make to dismiss us. Mm -hmm. Wow. And I, if there's anybody I want to sound like, it's the Greek philosophers that persecuted early Christians mm -hmm. or the Romans that cooperated with the Sanhedrin to crucify the Christ. But his energy drink's pretty good. Yeah. But, but Mike Winger just, energy just drink? because... Celsius. Oh. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> Dad joke. There, there was a lot of people named Celsius back there. It's actually yeah. a measurement of temperature but okay. oh celsius <laughs> not celsius, yeah, celsius. Yeah. Uh, but that's okay. where you get like the root for celsius from he's too smart don't bring him back <laughs> I'm, I'm, sorry. <laughs> I'm so sorry <laughs> yeah okay so my last just the last but thing Cardin, I'll say. just just because hitler owned a dog doesn't mean that everybody who owns dogs no i'm not so because i saying. think sometimes we can make arguments that he might be able to say well that sounds like this yeah. and that was bad and therefore so it is kind of a we did not perform as poorly as he did well, in no. this thing no obviously oh, so for sure. all i <laughs> I'm saying is that if there was a young man who was raised in the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints who walked into Mike Winger's church and said, you know, I don't know what it is, but when I walked by this church building, I just felt in my heart I had to come in here and I had to talk to somebody. Is that person you? Do you think he would sit that young man down and say, oh, no, 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 no. Your heart lies to you. Your heart is full of nothing but deceit. And it's going to tell you the worst thing. You need to get out of here. If your heart told you to get out of here, man, you need to go find the real thing that God yeah, wants you to I, do. I think if Mike takes the time to think about what we've said in this video and what he's said in his video, he'll recognize that the scriptures don't support what he's saying. I don't think so. Cause Not in a consistent depends. way. Mm -hmm. that, that he's, he is applying things inconsistently when it comes to the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. And, and if you're worried, if you're wondering about that, maybe pray about it. Talk to God about it. Try to figure that out. Because I think that, honestly, there, there's an enormous opportunity to learn more. And and who knows? Maybe, maybe, maybe you'll just continue the way that you've been continuing. But even, I think, Pastor Jeff of Hello Saints, who is trying to learn about us with an open mind. Um, again, like you said, Cardin, don't think he's going to be converting anytime soon. But I think he is gaining a great deal more understanding and I think Christ-like love for people than he would if he wasn't approaching it this way. So I'd invite you, even if you're not looking at this from a standpoint of like if you could never question that maybe you were wrong, at least try to look for what good you can find in it. Yeah, I'm just going to say I think he won't because his paycheck depends upon towing that line which is why I think one of the most divinely inspired aspects of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, and one of the biggest revelations that was given to Joseph Smith, okay, was the concept of a lay clergy. Because none of us, straight from King Benjamin to my bishop, is getting paid. So none of us are tethered to a bad idea that we will have to defend in order to collect a paycheck. This guy right here, would have to contend with his own doubts 
of losing that paycheck if an angel were to visit him tomorrow and say the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints is true. So I, I, I don't know. I think cash bias is one of the biggest biases out there and it's difficult for a man to get over. However, you have told me that, I mean, you, you've convinced me that you're right. I cannot say he cannot repent because I would be denying the atonement. The, 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 the atonement. And you're right. It is possible. I, I can say I'm dubious because I'm just a cynical banshee and that's my own problem. You know what I'm saying? But um, yeah, cash bias is real. Yeah. So anyway, Kwaku, any last thoughts here before we uh, um, before we call it quits on um, the uh, the pastor, Mike Winger? Part one. Part one. Yeah. What? Well, first. Are you chewing? Yeah. Oh <laughs> oh, <laughs> this thing okay. went on for two hours. I got hungry. Uh, okay, um, so it, <laughs> Mike, look, we have fun in this show. You may not realize we're not a proselytizing show. It's a Mormon bro show. That's why we don't come across, cr- come off, across like the other LDS channels. I don't think you're a beta I know Cardin may have insinuated uh, yeah. that you're a beta <laughs> and you can't get women. I don't think that. I, I see that you're married. Think about this. One day we're all going to be in heaven. Well, we're all wrong about some stuff. Spend your life lifting people up. Spend your life bashing people. But the more you bash, the more you lose your hairline. It's a real thing. I don't want you to be bald by 60. <laughs> <laughs> what is that? that was not going where I thought. <laughs> okay. So more hair care tips and advice from Kwaku L. You know what I'm saying? Um, and I, I'm loving it. This is great. Yeah. Okay. So let us know where you think we went wrong. Uh, yeah. Pastor, uh, I don't know if he calls himself Dr. Mike Winger or not. I'm so used to that. They, they really emphasize I think it's that. Pastor Mike. Yeah. They, they emphasize sure. that doctor part yeah. so much. I can't remember. Who Why do these guys always have the most common? Mike, Jeff, <laughs> <laughs> what what what's with these? Come I on. don't know. We're Brad and Luke right here. Yeah, I know. Like, <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's probably their age and where they were born. Yeah, I think you know? Quaker, you and I are the only ones that can claim the weird name thing. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. So let us know where we go wrong. Hit us up in the comments below. Uh, uh, Pastor Mike, you are welcome to come on our program and clarify these positions. Uh, and tell us where we go wrong. Um, I will gladly facilitate that. We'll put you up in a hotel here in Los Angeles. I do believe, if I remember correctly, I think he's down in Orange County somewhere. So I could be wrong. I don't remember. But anyway, um, this is Midnight Strike Through Mormons. We'll meet you guys in the next program. Hey, guys. This is Cardin Ellis. I'm the creator of Midnight Mormons. Thank you so much for watching this video. We know in an attention economy, you could be spending your time elsewhere, but you chose to spend it here with us for that. We are grateful. Before you go to the next video, please make sure that you hit the like button. It tells the algorithms that you like our content and it will hopefully recommend more content in the future. Also, if you can subscribe to our channel, it's a great way to be alerted of more content we make. And if you press that bell icon next to the subscribe button, you'll be alerted on every video we make. We put a lot of hard work into these and we want you to see all of our videos. So please subscribe. Also, if you would like to contribute, if you're feeling generous, please consider a contribution to the channel through Venmo. We we also have contributions that you can give us through PayPal. There will be links in the description of this video to both of those platforms. If you're a giving person that prefers working through Amazon, we also have an Amazon wish list. Much of the equipment that you see in our studio is purchased through Amazon and we're grateful if you could uh, contribute that way. Also, somewhere around like here, I'd say, and somewhere around like right here is going to be a recommendation for more of our content that you might like. So please click on another video and we'll see you there. Either way, we're glad to have you here. Thanks for hanging out with us. This is Midnight Strike Through Mormons. We will see you in the next video.